Uh, we light. Uh, we light. Seems good. Okay, let's continue with some Oni. And we were just... Oh, wow. I was going to say we're just at the point where the room was starting to flash to steam. But, uh... That is an unstable equilibrium that tips over relatively quickly. Okay. So we have... Quite a lot of heat sealed in here pretty well. Uh, this airlock does get quite hot, but we maintain a vacuum in these two tiles right here with a uh, with a miniature gas pump. Pump not in gas. Yes, yes, that is the idea. Uh, let it. Let's suppress that particular notification. Bilbo, good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Just wanted to pop in and say that. <laughs> Fair enough. Uh, thanks for stopping by. Yeah, we're not overly concerned when... Oh. Liquid vent over pressure? But there's no... Liquid... Huh? Well, whatever. It's... It's not a notification that we need to that is a slow and be killer. reminded of all the time. So let's get rid of that. Overconfidence? What am I overconfident of? Oh, wow. The shape of the steam is uh, a little weird. So how hot is it in here? 102 degrees already? Very nice. And we've got 100 degree water is the coolest I could find. So it is very much about to flash to steam. It actually says its evaporation point is 99.4 degrees. I wonder why it's not evaporating. Ben Wu, Larius, BG Nyman, good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Um, so I don't remember exactly how hot is the maximum temperature for the steam turbine to do its job, but the steam itself... Uh, I forget how we get get it to tell us how hot the steam needs to be. What if I set this nice and low, and then the steam engine... 125, there it is. Okay, so... Uh, we should set this thing to at least 150, otherwise this thing's just gonna sputter, right? I mean, the point of the steam turbine is to delete heat, so I'm not that concerned how efficiently it gives us power. At least, that's the that's not the thing I'm most concerned about. Um, but I would like to see it working all the same. Uh, I guess we should generate more heat then. Oh. Oh, that's nasty. What's going on here? Why are our hydroponic farms hot? Oh no. Oh no. Why is our... Uh, why is our water reservoir hot? Oh right, I forgot. The last thing we did was starting to add... Uh, started to add hot water. Because we were running out of water. Um, we do have a coolant system. It doesn't go that close to here. Um, I could... I could extend the coolant loop that we've already got to run through here. Or, alternatively, if I've got enough steel, which I pro... Oh, I actually do. Um... 
I think what might be good is to add a third coolant loop. We've got one for most of the base. We've got a second one for specifically this industrial area right here. And I was thinking we could add one uh, particularly to come down here as opposed to have the coolant loop from the main base. Uh, as opposed to having that just loop in through here as well. Since, since we're going to be taking in hot water. I don't know if... Uh, I don't know if we'll necessarily need to take it in indefinitely. Let's assume that we will. So we're going to have insulated pipe. We'll have to add some liquid bridges here to make this work. It's going to be a bit of pipe spaghetti. I can't run coolant pipe through all of this. There just isn't room. But we can definitely... Hmm. It's not going to be that good, is it? If it wasn't for this being the majority of our food supply... I would say I would say we could wait and see if this uh, cools things down by itself. We do have three hundred and eight k calories, uh, thousand k calories banked, so it might not be that bad. Do I have enough food to survive the fix? I believe so. Um. We did just pump, like, a lot of hot water in here. And it's already 10 degrees cooler than it was, like, over here. So maybe we'll just give it some time and, and see what happens. After all, these farms that are too hot are surrounded by coolant pipes. So... They should be equalizing already. As in, they're on their way to cooling down. We didn't have a problem with overall throughput of water uh, from the infinite supply before. It was more... Because we added more water than we realized to this area that our uh, reservoir ran dry. Thirty five degrees. It'll it'll survive at thirty. Oh, this one's already getting cold enough. But why is our coolant loop... Why does our coolant loop have gaps? Uh, is what I would like to know, actually. Um, when is this active again? 28 cycles? Oh, no. Okay, what I might do... Is... I can get rid of that, actually. A little bit less confusing. Uh... What I might do is cut off the supply. Let me just connect this up here. I'll disconnect this here so it's really obvious when we look at it again. I'll cut off the supply of new slush going into uh, the desalinator going into our water supply. And first things first, I'll fill the coolant loop. We'll temporarily get rid of this uh, requirement that water level goes up to at least here.
and we'll get rid of the gaps in the coolant loop. If we have enough fluid, uh, if we have enough slush to fill the coolant loop and then some left over, I'll pump it into our water reservoir, which will cool things down a little bit more. But yeah, this is, uh, this is not the best time to have... Let's make these radiant pipes. Not the best time to have gaps in our coolant, I think. Oh wait, what am I making it out of? Lead? Perfect. Lead pipe, best pipe. We definitely want that equalizing as fast as possible. Um, it's probably fine. I wonder if we've got enough. 10 kilograms per pipe. And... We've got like 27 pipes here, uh, 27, wait, really? Oh, it's pretty even, despite the look of it. So let's call it 25 pipes worth from each tile. Uh, we might have enough to fill this. Lead pipes, indeed. Costco Taquitos, Blaz, good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Oh, that's a lot of pips. Overcrowded. Oh, no. We've got ten. Where does it tell us how many is too many? Our target is five. Um, Cuddle Pip. Oh. What's this? Cuddle Pip. Uh, 0.5 units a cycle becomes 12.5 kilograms a cycle. It's less efficient, but I'm guessing it makes the dupes happy. It doesn't say. Ah. <sighs> You would think if they're going to have this in-game database, they would actually include the information about the game in it. Alright, I guess we need to find our oldest pips and retire them. Hopefully that's enough to make the others happy. I'll definitely take some mirth leaf. Combat. How's our temperature? Uh, the plants on the sides are starting to grow again already. And as for our slush... It's looking pretty likely that we'll be able to uh, fill the loop. The gaps in the loop were from when I stole some to add to this block here. Why is there polluted water here? Did someone make a mess? Oh, that wouldn't be that surprising since we had a water input problem, briefly. I guess the lack of info in-game shows how much devs hate to write documentation in general, apparently. Can we sweep this? Apparently not. It's clay, storage unavailable. This is supposed to just be lead. 
Um, how about... Uh, we can put some more bins up here, I guess. I can't quite see... There we go. Alright, so the loop is well and truly saturated, probably, mostly. There's going to be gaps somewhere, but I think we have enough to fill them. And not a moment too soon, either. Chuck some into the desalinator as well. Alright, turn that back on, or off. Press current notification. Fantastic. Good mod. Very good mod. Right then, what's our temperature down here? 55. It's still a bit toasty in our water storage, but we've got more of these bristle blossoms growing now. Yeah, it didn't actually take that long at all to, uh, to get this temperature back to normal. Maybe in the future I could I could build like a standard loop around the water input for the hydro farms. I definitely want next time to have like coolant loop going up, coolant loop going down, so that we can have a really standardized kind of bus for the coolant. Okay, have we just about... Uh, now we've got polluted oxygen up here. Could we perhaps get... Some deodorizers? Why can't I put this here? What's, what's on this top? Oh, can I not build a block where there's drywall? Okay. I see how it is. I can't really be bothered swapping them in and out right now. One thing I wish this game had for management of gas is... Just fans. Just blow gas in a direction. It doesn't have to be very strong, uh, just to make sure, like, all of this polluted oxygen sooner or later makes its way to a deodorizer, for example. I know it will eventually, eventually, but it's going to take its sweet time. We are at maximum critters plus... Oh, that's including our eggs. Perfect. The, uh, the Drekos don't breed that quickly, which I appreciate. They live to 150, they breed slowly, we don't have to check on them every five minutes and cull them to make them happy. Um, do I really want a cuddle pip? Whatever, let's let one grow up, at least. So we can look at the stats and stuff. <laughs> uh, 
I love some of this art. Speaking of art, we should maybe add some more. Could we have some... Uh, furniture? Mechanical surfboard. It's actually quite small. Some water gets splashed on the floor during use. Uh, I would put that in my water reservoir room, but... It's a bit full of chlorine. High pressure chlorine. I don't think there's anywhere else particularly convenient to put it, is there? Oh, what about this? No, we're not putting it in the n industrial room. Let's stop getting distracted. Uh, what was a telescope? And that reminds me, we still have to do space things. Um, I haven't thought it through, but, well, I've thought it through this much at least. We're going to have to have one space scanner that is just to detect incoming meteors. And we're just not going to worry about, um, having it exposed to space. Ooh, speaking of meteors, Rock Comet. Look at that heat. Gas. Uh, but yeah, I'd like to set up a auto miner. And... I'd like to... We've kind of already, but just not in a neat, tidy, and deliberate way, set up our, our first space scanner that's going to... Um... Remain under bunker tiles. So I guess we could get rid of this bunker door. Um, but I would like to have... Let's see. We need one of these that's always working, so it's not... It's just always safe. We need at least one that is set up the way we wanted to set up our first one. Whereby... Bunker door opens, it's exposed to space, it, uh, it works better, and then no matter what we do, it is going to get, uh, regolith on top of it. So we'll have to have an auto miner, uh, where is it? Where is the auto miner? Stations? No. Utilities? No. What is a liquid tepidizer? Warms bodies of liquid at the cost of power. Well, we're not going to be needing that on this rock. Uh, refinement? Automation? No. Where is... Oh, here it is. Shipping. Robo Miner automatically digs out materials in a set range. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we're going to need an auto miner to dig out the regolith that ends up on top of the space scanner. I suppose it may as well be where we get our resources from as well. We don't need like a dedicated area for just mining, unless we want to increase the throughput. Anyway, uh, too many squirrels. Let's look back at our food situation. Oh, that's much better. That is sorting itself out so much better, th uh, quicker than I thought. Um, can we put some paintings in here? Not kind of. Oh, can it go behind the plants? 
Is that okay? Perfect. Where's the decor overlay? There it is. Oh, it's already kind of a little bit nice in here because of the light. How much does the ceiling light improve decor? It doesn't directly. There's nothing in the stats about decor. But now I'm curious, what if we added lights into... into, like, the main bus area? Can we actually... mitigate how much the dupes hate... the industrial stuff? I doubt it. Yeah, that's, like... Not even close. It's still maximally horrible in here. Well then, I guess if you don't like the lights, I'll get rid of them. Unreachable build, because we're not allowing anyone in there. Because... I don't remember why. It was probably part of while we, while we were building this stuff. Copy settings. Make sure we can store whatever was here. Yes, we can actually. Reuse clan. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Sorry to ask, how do you handle the plants which need to be under 5 degrees? Like sleet in a base which has an average temp of 20. I haven't got to... Uh-oh. Uh-oh. It turns out we can't put these here. <laughs> okay. Uh, I haven't actually gotten to growing plants at negative five degrees. Well, on the plus side, that is still a decent fit. Okay. What does a puffed make for us again? Uh, oxalite, I guess. That's just gonna off gas if we don't store it somewhere. Do we need to store oxalite underwater? Oh crap. Um, speaking of storing things underwater. Oh wait, I guess we don't have to worry about it. We can store slime in here because the room is full of oxygen. I mean, oxygen? Chlorine. Uh, the germs aren't going to get anywhere. Although, we might still want to store it underwater so that... Um, so that they're not off-gassing. Slime lung doesn't actually off gas, right? D does does slime lose volume to leaking germs into the world? Oh, speaking of which, we missed a spot. Okay, did we get this built? We did. 
Fantastic. So we're going to need some... I guess it would make more sense in, in, instead of moving all this to do some of this stuff here. Well, we need the input here anyway. So that's going to go there. And then bridge down this way. And this goes here. Power. Oh. Oh, that's one problem. Hmm. We're going to need another transformer. I could just put one over here, I suppose. It's a bit tacky, but so is this whole area. What's this? Infect infectious polluted oxygen. Yeah, no. I don't think I'll be using that one. Uh, how's our exploring going? We've almost... We've almost seen the other edge of the map over this way. We've got our swirl of oxalate. And abyssalite, for some reason. Um, we can put these back now. Fantastic. Are the dupes going to be able to do their art up here? Or is it too high up? We, we're out of fertilizer. I could remove the farming stations temporarily to put some ladders in. But then... They'd have to be in the way of the plants. Maybe just one plant at a time. One, two, three. Can have a ladder in the way. This one's still too hot. Only by a little bit, though. Okay. Oh, right. This is going to be on its own loop, wasn't it? Uh, we can do it this way for now, just to get it supplied. I should really figure out the rest of the pipe spaghetti first. So I think... Okay, we're definitely going to have a bridge here, and I don't even have to worry about when to remove it. Because we can just snip this when we're ready. And that fluid always goes in that direction. So then we'll have one here. Which means we'll have one here. That could work. I'm just going to leave those... Oh, printing time. Leave those arts there for a while and see if any of the dupes can... Well, we've only got one artist. We'll see if our artist can do something with them or not. I'm guessing not. Actually, I have a better idea. If I put a ladder here... And why don't we put one here while this is still too hot? We'll see if the only artwork that gets done is in this area. Okay. Um, I would definitely like to go a bit higher. So we can have a nice, flat, organized build. 
I'm going to need a lot more steel to keep doing this as well. So let's queue some of that up. We already have a bunch of steel queued up, actually. We're just waiting on... What's our target temperature? Zero. Once both sides of this room measure zero on the coolant pipe, uh, then we'll do some more metal. There we go. Fantastic. Ambient temperature 64 degrees. That's what's coming out of the uh, metal refinery. Yeah, that's going to take a loop or two or three to cool down. Maybe I should actually... Uh, it's going to take so much power. Does it tell us somewhere here? Overheat temperature 75. Uh, I wish it told us exactly how much hotter the coolant comes out from the metal refinery, but I guess we can say it's about 60 degrees. 60 to 70. Probably literally exactly 65. Um, so that would be... negative 14. Uh, I would need f 4 or 5 aqua tuners. Like, 5 would overdo it and 4 would underdo it. Uh in series in order to cool all of this down to normal temperature in one loop if I wanted if I wanted it to cool down super fast um, but considering that we are down to two degrees already obviously that would be overkill but I, I wouldn't mind having a second thermo aqua tuna that could do this. However, the way we've got this set up, because we need uh, transformers, uh, because we need transformers, there's only so much power we can squeeze in here. Uh, I need a bridge. There we go. Usually you can check the output temp on the mouse over info. Uh, thank you. By Cal, good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Uh, in the build menu, do you mean in here? Yeah, I don't think... Wow. Metal refinery. Yeah, there's nothing anywhere about exactly how much it heats the coolant. Mouse over all of them? Oh, you mean like this? Significantly heats and outputs liquid piped into it. The pink texts. Okay. Like this. Must be connected. Begins overheating at 75. Uh, nope. Nothing this time. Okay. What's this supposed to be? Regular storage? Maybe I could do something more specific here, but I'm just a bit too lazy. What's this? Clay. Why is there clay here? Does a deodorizer output clay? I've never seen that before. Sandra scented. <laughs> Amazing.
All right, how's our temperature? Uh, the plants are mostly growing. The ones that were closer to the coolant pipe certainly are. Um, perhaps I should make this room a bit more aggressive in its cooling. Seems good. Actually, you know what, I'm going to be super lazy and just put that down there. I want to see exactly how far they can reach. There's our first bit of art over here. Oh, they can reach up here. Fantastic. Copy settings. There we go. This is what art looks like. <laughs> Matrim, you're a genius. Uh, why can't I click on Matrim? Nope, oh, too late. Perfect. That That is true art. Oh, they can reach across this far. Okay, so... That was four tiles. One, two, three, four, four... Five. If I'll be surprised if they can reach this one. I think it's two out and diagonally about the same. Okay. Whoa! No! 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 Deconstruct buildings. There we go. Making squares with paintballs must be tough, right? Um, I guess we can start planning this. So... If we're going to have solar panels, we actually need to have, like, solar panels, bunker doors. There doesn't look to be a way to line these up elegantly. What kind of multiple would we need? Way too many for that to line up beautifully. And if I were to make this like symmetrical, we're gonna lose out on solar power. Um, but anyway, we're gonna need some bunker tiles, we're gonna need an auto miner. It's under shipping, isn't it? Oh, how much space does this actually take up? Two by two? Two by two. Can we... Does it have to cling to a ceiling or wall or something? Or if we built it here, invalid building location. Would it let us build it underneath... A bunker door. We can find out without going up there. We can make this our lab over here. Bunker door. Actually, leave that ladder. Robo miner. Didn't take very long. And it looks like the limits of their reach is 
as expected. Oh, that does work. Okay, that makes it a bit easier. So we're not going to have to have, like, solar panel and then horizontally uh, auto miner. Because then they'd have to be at a one-to-one -one ratio, which would suck a little bit. So we could have something like this. I'd love to make a repeating pattern, even if it's not perfectly efficient. Bunker doors like this. Metal tile is not going to cut it. Uh, bunker tile. Would, would you let me... There we go. Well, actually, I suppose... The bunker tiles would just be... Could repeat it like that. Leave room for some ladders or something. Just use cubed, cube-shaped paintballs. <laughs> Big brain, indeed. Um, alright, that might be easier than I thought. Where does the stuff actually go, though? From the Robo Miner. I'm guessing it just, like, drops onto the ground. I'm getting ahead of myself doing solar panels. I need to just think about uh, getting our infinite source of resources first. Um, this would be a pretty good place to test the Robo Miner, right? We want to just get rid of this eventually anyway. How much power does it need? Only 120 watts. That's nice. That's surprisingly very nice. I don't suppose we can get it to face another direction or something. Uh, we can make it out of lead, so we better watch out and not do that up where it is going to get hot. Hurry up and build this. I want to test it. Food is down to 188,000 calories. But I think we'll be okay. Probably. No, I think we should hurry up with the new coolant loop project. Um, so let's see. Liquid pipe thermosensor. Temperature coming in... Here. Automation wire. Like so. And coolant loop. Spaghetti is its way down here somehow. Let's just work backward from what we want. Uh, 
I think I do want... You know what? Let's move this pipe. And that's going to go over here. And I don't know that we need this, or at least... No, we really don't need it anymore. But I'll leave the rest of that there for the moment. We'll give this a little snippy as soon as we're ready. Where are you taking slime? Farming supply. Oh. Yeah, I forgot mushrooms want slime. Okay. Did we get that pipe done already? Pretty much. Let's snip that. Make sure this is high priority. Who's getting scalded? Whoa, evil pla. Why? How are you getting scalded? Is it from the input water from this pipe? It's not that hot. You didn't just get scalded up here, did you? I suppose that's possible? Not really. What What's over here that's so hot? Gas pipe? At 67 degrees. Oh. Oh. That's an issue. Hmm. So, we really need to keep uh, trips through this door to a minimum. Because every time we use this little airlock, gas, uh, oxygen gets into this little uh, vacuum room. And then, even though we're pumping it out as quickly as we can with a mini pump, uh, it takes heat from the airlock door, which is taking heat from this room. And then it's getting pumped out. Uh, hot air is getting pumped out from here to here. Surprisingly hot enough to scald even though it's not happening for very long. Interesting. Uh, we do still need one more trip into here to finish the automation wire, though. Or two, depending on who does it. Our PHL streams, good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Okay, maybe I should have put the gas vent a little bit further out of the way. Well, we got it done now. I'm just going to forbid going through this door. Um, and... If something's wrong in here, we'll find out not by having the dupes go in and out. Why not have two airlocks? Do you mean one on each side? Oh, we're up to 113 degrees. Uh, I'll definitely take the free iron. Uh, these gas vents were from a different time. Let's get rid of those so that we can put our plants back in. And I suppose... Hmm.
I suppose more airflow tiles from the bedroom would be good. Where are we getting all this copper from? Is it from space? No. Well, maybe. Copper ore. 3.7 kilograms. That's not much. Uh, 53 kilograms. I don't remember having this much copper, though. Where did it come from? We haven't been letting the uh, molten copper volcano do its thing. It comes out at 2,226 degrees. I kind of want to play with this, actually. I would like to exploit it for steam power. Just wondering why you chose the regular airlock instead of another mod airlock, keeping the vacuum secure? Yeah, uh, well, I guess it was just space, really. But also, uh, it's okay if a little gas gets in here. I mean, someone got slightly scalded once, that's the downside of it. I could pump this uh, a little bit further away would be a little bit better. Um, maybe just chuck it over here even. That's actually, this whole area is actually airtight so the pressure would end up being really really high. I could put it over here where there's basically no foot traffic and the cool slush. We'll do that. And I, I can't actually queue up a bridge until that's deconstructed, right? Yep. Um, but yeah, mostly just space is the only reason I did a vanilla airlock on this side. I would do a vanilla airlock on both sides, except then we would pump out steam. Or we'd need a filter to not do that. Which I guess would be okay. But we'd have to have a little bit more space taken up externally. Um, let's hurry up with this loop, shall we? Alright, so we can get rid of all of these pipes. We can have radiant pipe. I'm gonna need to really mess around with the pipes to do some bridges here. A lot. Or... I was going to say we could take advantage of this space, but then that's taken up. I think we'll do it like this. Bridge. Going up. Oh. Yeah, no, let's do it like this. Bridge going down. Uh, we can't really put them next to each other, though. Bridge going this way. Bridge going that way. And I don't really care if these coolant pipes touch temporarily. We'll use the snippy tool when we're ready. Maybe I should have just extended the main loop. It might have been easier. 
Nah, this area is so hot and, and we're taking in hot water all the time now. I, I think it should have its own coolant loop. Um, alright, so this goes this way. That goes that way. Same thing down here. Oh. Um, that's a problem. The bathrooms, that is. I, I don't want to go through the nature reserve, obviously. Good morning, Morpheus out. Good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Don't tell me I'm going to have to, like... Oh, that's not even going to work. Uh, pipes are a headache. Pipes are a big headache. Maybe we should go around through here. That might be a lot better, actually. And it's going to be a lot less bad to look at. I still foresee going through this way. Oh, that's not going to be good enough, is it? I think we need our bridges here, actually. No Terraria this week? Yeah, I had some stuff on and then I wasn't feeling that well. That's all. Well, at that end I wanted to put a bit more time into the factory. But I was planning on... Um, I was planning on making up uh, Tuesday with Wednesday, but it just didn't work out. Uh, okay, so... Insulated pipe. It's going to go down here. And then we're going to have a bridge here. Stuff happens, yeah. Try to keep it to a minimum. And then like this. And then we want our input going through here spaghetti this goes this way uh that's not going to that's not going to work so well Only, only definitely has some spaghetti, yeah. I mean, uh, it's true of any one of these games where the less you know going into it, the more spaghetti you're going to end up with, but um, it is really difficult with the pipes, with the liquid, with the bridges that only go over one tile. Um, like, imagine if underground belts in Factorio only skipped one tile. That's what this is, basically. Um, I could change this loop here so that we don't necessarily go that way. Might be easier. On the other hand... How about this? Is that the input? That's the input. And output this way. 
and then output that's going to need a bridge again and this is going to go here Do you think this game should be named Pipetorio? <laughs> I mean, the main thing about Oni that's different from most games is gas. I used to just call it gas game. Alright, we're gonna have a bridge here, I think. Or is this... this is output, so it's going down this way. And snippy snip. And down through here. And then up this way. These should really be insulation tiles at this point. Actually... Yeah, we're generating... We're leaking too much heat into the rest of the base. Let's make that insulation tile. But I want the pipes done first, and I don't want to bother prioritizing everything. So let's do the pipes first. And I want... as much of this as possible to be radiant pipe. Is that going to be okay? I think so. And then we could probably loop it through where all of the wait what's the temperature range for mushrooms five to negative five to 35 okay that's perfect actually we only have to worry a little bit about cooling the mushrooms too much um but yeah i want a coolant loop going through where our uh, uh, compost is. And then not enough materials. Oh, wow. We're out of lead. I never thought I'd see the day. Uh, let's go get some more then. Lead. Lead, lead, lead. Uh, is it metal? Yeah, it's yellow. Okay. Get some more lead. Where's our easiest lead that we can take? Up here. It's nice not having to worry about controlling the flow of oil anymore. Uh, what's that? Iron. I guess we'll take that. And... The trouble with the lead is... It's all... In little bits all over the place. Okay, for some reason there's some lead down here that's already been mined. Why don't we dig down this way as well? And I think we'll need one more ladder there. 
dig at all, indeed. Right. Um, so this is our input pipe. Uh, this doesn't all need to be radiant pipe in any case. It's really just this area that I'm more concerned about. Is that still marked as lead? It is. Okay, let's remove that for the moment, and we'll do some regular old pipe. That's gonna go down there, and I think this time... I'll make sure I leave a gap ahead of time in case we want to put water in from somewhere else. So we need a bridge. That's not a bridge. There we go. Bridge. 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 And... Let's see. Bit more of a coolant loop for this area. And we'll just have the uh, the input one go around, I think. I hope they can reach that. Well, We'll just have to cr cross that bridge when we get to it. Okay. This game needs a work whistle, a get to work. Uh, it kind of does have that if we go to yellow alert or red alert. So the dupes won't sleep through something that's literally an emergency. We're getting an awful lot of polluted oxygen coming through here. Um, maybe I'll even put an airlock here for the moment. As opposed to just this deodorizer over here. Because the off-gassing polluted water is actually building up enough pressure to push the gas over this way. I guess that, that, that's one way that we can have, um, uh, the equivalent of a fan, is if we can somehow put more pressure on one side of the room. Okay, it's bugging me that that pump is turning on and off all the time. Oh, don't, no, 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 don't make that out of steel. What a waste. Make it out of lead. Make it out of lead. I know we don't have the resources right now, but we will. Uh, lead is actually the shiny stuff. Diamond is shiny as well, but it's actually quite easy to spot. We may as well dig up some diamond while we're at it. last piece. 
So one thing I've noticed uh, is so far, or rather what I haven't noticed so far, is a infinite source of lead, but I'm not too worried about that. Lead is a really nice uh, mid-game kind of carry. We got our CO2 in here, we don't need to pipe that over there anymore. Not that the pipe here is getting CO2 either. But I think we can go ahead and get rid of that. Oh wait, we do need CO2 there. Um, where am I going to get it from now? I should build the base in a really deliberate fashion so that CO2 from the dupes ends up pooling in a specific area and we'll pump it from there into the uh, uh, the canister filler. Lead, the mir miracle material of the future? <laughs> Indeed. Uh, it's really more of a stopgap. It's a bit like oil. It'll get you to the future. And end your civilization if it's not very intelligent. Yeah, it looks like... Oh, we're just waiting. That is an unreachable build, actually. Um, the dupes can't climb up these, can they? That would be too easy. But I want to confirm it. Priority. How's our temperature? It is improving. I'm really surprised how long it's taking to drop the last half a degree to get most of our food growing. That is a bit concerning. We need to get this loop working. I might even uh, just replace this with regular pipe. Until we can upgrade it. Unreachable build, yep. We're gonna have to get rid of some stuff here temporarily. Sick bay and a sink. Sink. There we go. Medicine. Sink. Terraria update. This stack size increase is crazy. Good. That's all I have to say about that. Not needing a mod for stack size is going to be nice too, because the one that really increases the stack size uh, had 
compatibility issue or something. I remember right clicking wasn't working to like put armor on, stuff like that. Why can't I? There we go. Health pots stuck to 10k. Nice. So I take it dirt stacks to something like that. What about ammo? I want to know about ammo. Um, alright, can we cancel what we've got here for the moment? And we'll replace it with regular pipe. And we'll just upgrade that when we can. That's weird. Is it not? How about this? That should be more than enough to exchange heat though with this area. The notes just say, most stackable items limit increase to 10k. Okay, beautiful. That's probably going to be... Pro probably going to include ammo then. Now, if only they would do something about... If you want to play Ranger and have a few different types of weapons, it not taking up multiple stacks of ammo. Schlerpus, good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. I remember three streams ago heat was not even a problem. Uh, well, we sort of ran out of water a little bit for a moment, and we took water from a steam vent. Oh, this is supposed to have this setting. So we're not going to bother running the pump until there's more water here. Um, yeah, we kind of took in a lot of hot water um, as a kind of an emergency measure. So now we're catching up. Like, it, it'll sort itself out eventually, but we might be a little bit dead before it does. So I'm adding a third coolant loop that's going to pump heat to our steam room. JP, good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. What are we printing? Uh, don't we already have everyone in snazzy suits? I think that's a snazzy suit, right? Uh, let's see. Evil Pla. Uh, is it under status? Properties? Where do we see what they're wearing? It's not bio, surely. Oh, it is. Suit, Atmo suit, clothing, snazzy suit. Okay, that's Evil Pla. And what's what suit what sort of suit is Kevin wearing? Uh Kevin. Oh, can I not it'd be nice if I could jump to Kevin from here. Kevin is wearing nothing. I could have sworn we made exactly as many suits. Oh, is that a warm sweater that Kevin's wearing? It doesn't... I don't know. Whatever, we'll take the snazzy suit. And assign it... to Kevin. The cool slush is not producing anymore? Uh, that too. Yeah, it's not producing for another 18 cycles. J. 
just a sec. New items and content added sheep? What? Please tell me that's not Terraria. Okay. Reading the Terraria patch notes? Oh no. Alright, can we... P oh, we're down to 0 0.3 degrees. 0.2 degrees. Half a degree over temperature. Why is the coolant loop slowing down? Oh, is it because... There's still some connections here that are wrong. I forgot to fix that. Is that not it? Um, good question. That's looking a bit better. It's still stopping and starting, though. Hmm. Oh, is this... Please don't tell me we ended up with fluid where it's not supposed to be. I don't think we did. That's better. Okay. That might have been a bit of a hindrance to cooling our plants. Very good. Okay. Your local guru, thank you for the raid. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Welcome, raiders. How was your stream today? What were we playing? Oxygen not included. Good taste. What'd you get up to? Do we not have materials for this or something? It looks like we do. Stream was good. Colony is struggling. Uh-oh. Can we... We can't reach that at the moment. Uh, I think... I would either have to dig up a tree or let someone in here to build those pipes. I made a mess trying to make steam power from lava. Oh, what went wrong? We're going to need... Uh, so this was going to be the input pipe, I think. And where's the output pipe? Trace, trace, trace. Oh. Wait, what? Oh, that was linked to itself. I see. So this goes here. This goes this way. Uh, these can all go. And... Huh? I think I played myself. I hate to raid and run, but alas, it's that time of the morning. Alright, take care, local. Thanks for, thanks for the raid. Have a good one. Let's see. Input pipe... is looking pretty good, actually. 
output pipe. I don't think this should be connected. That's gonna look a bit weird. It'll be a bit harder to read. I'll move that over. Okay, we desperately need this done. Construction jobs, top priority. In fact, literally top priority. Because if the base cooks, we don't eat. And we're down to 134,000 calories, which sounds like a lot, but it doesn't go that far if we're not producing. Oh. Um, I might make this priority 9, because only one person can work on it at a time. Still going to take a little while. Maybe we could make a shorter version of the loop. In the meantime, I've actually been at his stream. It was a mess. Lava in the base. Oh my god. Stream, uh, steam broke pipes. Dupes are peeing everywhere. Starvation stress is 97%. Ouchie. So it wasn't an exaggeration to say they made a mess. The whole beauty of this game. <laughs> Apparently. Okay, I want this loop finished. I want to see the fluid moving, even if it's not full yet. Okay, we're getting somewhere. Where is this even trying to go? There's nothing... There's nowhere for it to go yet. I'm surprised it would pump this way without an output. Or rather an input? Depends on how you look at it. I, I guess a building intake. Yeah, I'm surprised that it pumps this way without being connected to a building intake. Uh, we do still want slush to be added to this loop in particular. Uh, we're completely out of new slush though. Maybe I shouldn't connect that right now. Because I still want the main base um, to get enough cooling. Everyone's sleeping through the yellow alert. Okay, here we go. Nope. One, two, three, four, five. We might get it done in one more trip. Probably not. I imagine. Not even close. I don't even think we'll get it done in one more trip now. Whoever created the idea for this game is a genius. This one might be helpful. The player can have double the number of active buffs slash debuffs, 44 total, before they start overriding each other. Oh, thank God. 
that's actually going to make late game or mid to late game calamity so much better. I don't have to like pick and choose which buffs I'm not going to take and carefully avoid buff stations and stuff. In fact, I imagine getting it to 44 would be rather difficult. Why 44, though? That's... that's very oddly specific. Top priority, sedimentary rock. Okay, here we go. It's not missing resources or something. Can we please get this done? It's been literal days, I just want a few pieces of pipe. Oh my god, why? Why did you... Why are you picking up sedimentary rock and fungal spore? Okay then. Do wait, do I have like priority 9 building? Uh, storage? Not here. Oh, thank god. Okay. Now we look for errors in our coolant loop. Calamity means something like a disaster, yes. As in a big disaster. Like... Global in scale? Question mark? Alright, and that's gonna go back to our number three. Thermal Aquatuna, which is going to have a setting of let's say cool the coolant if we're above 20 degrees. It'll drop it by 14 degrees and we don't want to cool these mushrooms below 5. I'm sure by the time the fluid goes through the loop it'll be a bit warmer than that, but still. And did it already go through? Did I miss it? No, here it is. I just wish... Um, I, I guess we could... I guess we could accomplish this with a not gate, but I wish the default signal for this, if there's no fluid, was red. We could have the opposite condition on... Uh, on the pipe thermosensor and run it through a not gate, I guess. No power? Oh, this is limited to a thousand watts. Oh, no. Uh, okay, let's fix that immediately. Power, large transformer, and go. What are we making it out of? Lead. Oh, how much lead do we have now? 90k? Um... Okay, that, that was more than I was expecting from that amount that I dug up, or marked to be dug up. We haven't even dug it all up yet. Uh, and in fact, this is fossil over here. Lead. This is igneous rock. Where's the lead? Here we go two tons in this tile alone. Fantastic. What are we printing? Nothing? Fantastic. 
Um, how's our power now? Looking good. Alright, so we have a little bit of coolant in this loop. I'm thinking we should steal a bit more from the main loop. Ooh, and our steam is almost hot enough to run a steam engine. Uh, turbine, rather. Nice. Heat is trapped in here pretty good. Uh, when do we get slush? 15 cycles. I think we're going to make it. I think we're going to be okay. Hmm. We could definitely use a few more variations for what we get when we make a masterpiece. Um, but it's fine. Maybe don't put the same masterpiece next to itself, if possible. Alright, so how's our temperature down here? Currently 52.4 degrees. Um, yeah, I will steal some coolant from the main loop. Wait, that's not working? Uh, why isn't that connecting? Oh, because it's all going straight to this input. Oh, no. I think that means I've been sucking potentially what little coolant is in this loop and putting it into the main loop. Uh, we could perhaps do this. Nice. And something I forgot is we're going to need another reservoir somewhere. Um, I don't necessarily want to get rid of a masterpiece to make it fit. Maybe a couple of storage bins would be okay. Or we could even use one of these reservoirs instead. I'd love to fit it up here, but it's not quite going to be possible. Let's see. Top, right, input, bottom left, output. Uh... I don't really want to put it on the bottom layer. That's where we want to keep the slime and stuff. As a priority. I think... Uh, you know what? Masterpieces are a dime a dozen now. Let's just move this one. And we'll put a liquid reservoir. What? Why did you leave that job half done? Okay. Much schnell bitter. Or were you doing a different job? Alright, liquid reservoir. Overheat temperature 75. Uh, that should be fine, actually. Well, you know what? Let's make it out of gold amalgam anyway. And we'll just get rid of this bit of pipe. I'm sure it'll be fine without it. That should actually help with finishing the rest of the loop. Oh, but if we put it here... 
We're going to have to run an automation wire all the way up to wherever we're adding stuff. Uh, we could just... I, I think I'll just do what I did with this one and manually manage and make sure there's just a little bit of slack. Instead of having an automation system to add coolant to each loop, we've just got one for the main loop. It only took 500 cycles for water to boil? Yeah, it's actually really good. Because uh, if you have just a decent sized body of water, and you don't have the ability to make a steam turbine yet, uh, you can pump an unbelievable amount of heat into a room like this before you can actually get steam going. Although... How much, how much does it cost for one aqua tuna? 1200 steel. You're gonna generate a bit of heat doing that, but that's okay. So if you're at the stage where you can make steel but not plastic, when you're kind of new to the game, uh, this will actually buy you an insane amount of time to get things figured out. Oh, look at the look at the cuddle pips we. That is carefully calculated to be adorable. All right, we've got a surprising amount of coolant in this loop already. Actually, can we not get this built? Not sure what the problem is there. Oh, and I meant to put some cute plants back in over right here. I really need to root, uh, to move the mess hall. Because we can't let oxygen... We, we can't put airflow tiles here. The floor just ends up with too much CO2 because it's too wide without any airflow. Oh, actually, this would be a good opportunity to test that theory. I was talking about there are no fans in this game. But what we could do... Is have, an, have a high pressure air vent, like here. On one side. Oh, we can fit that right there actually. Don't even need to... Do anything. Yeah, let's, let's try that. What's it going to be made of? Nice cheap lead. And we're just going to pump oxygen to this spot until it's over pressure. I think I can set the limit. Can I not? Nope, it just goes to 20 kilograms. That's kind of a lot. We could add some automation if necessary. But the idea is it's going to push the CO2 to the left. Why don't I add a CO2 detector over here and stop, uh, stop the gas vent here when we stop detecting CO2? Um, I think the answer to that question is probably going to be because I can't fit one without changing something, but I'll probably just get rid of, like, some crown molding or something. I I know it would be better if it's on the floor, but I don't want to get rid of any of this uh, symmetry. 
if I can help it. Gas element sensor. Yeah, we... Oh, I can put it behind the plants. Okay, it's not perfect if it's on, if it's not on the floor, but I think detecting CO2 here would be a pretty good rough indication of whether we need to pump more oxygen to here to push the gas away. Sigma Bean, good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Okay, so we're looking for CO2. Simple as that. And if I had room, maybe add a... Buffer gate? Oh, I can. Let's do that. Why can I put it here but not here? Oh, I... Wait, what? Oh, I, I can put it wherever I want. Okay. Snippy snip. And... Whenever we detect CO2, we're going to run this for a minute. See how that goes. Uh, there's actually not enough oxygen now. There will be. I could add another gas pump, but... If I do two gas pipes inputting to the one high pressure gas vent does that I think it would be better if it comes down here first actually let's try it Where do I want to go? How about just straight down this way? No, we should... Uh, I was going to say we should minimize... Okay, if we're going to minimize clogging up the bus and making it hard to bridge across it, then actually we should just go down like this, I think. And we'll bridge across this way. And then once that's saturated, it can go up here. I think. Is all of that reachable? I think it is. How's our coolant loop going? Snippy this part, and I th it's definitely getting cooler in there. We're down to 50 degrees on the water. Good. I think calories are climbing back up again. I think I saw they were at 130 before, 130k. And 12.6 cycles until we get slush again. Nice. Yeah, I don't think we really needed the radiant pipe if we're... If we're running through... Well... 
considering how much cooler the fluid is than its surroundings, I take that back. Oh, we could do better. We could run this over here. Uh, and we should probably insulate this now that we've got the high priority stuff done. Oh, no, 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 not with ceramic. We're not that rich. Uh, let's see. Insulated tile. Granite. Igneous rock. We've got 557,000. And it's slow heating. So let's do that. What's our gas vent doing? What's our oxygen supply doing? Very, very well. Fantastic. Oh, we haven't actually got the gas pump built yet. Fair enough. Should probably have prioritized it. Well, I, I kind of didn't realize it was not finished yet. Can we do construction only? There we go. Aquatuna is doing its thing. Fluid is down to 23 to 26 degrees. Oh, are we, are we taking heat away from here by swapping this out for insulated tiles? I think we are. It's going from 46.8 degrees to, like, 28 degrees. But we're dumping our heat down here where the, uh, where the materials are dropping. Which is actually... Oh, no. Oh, no. Um... Um... We kinda... We're kind of spilling a little bit of water when we block swap, it looks like. I didn't realize that would happen. Oh no indeed, Veldak. Good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Oh, um, be fine. Oh no moment, indeed. Piping maniac in action. Who's a piping maniac? I just need the base to be cool. <laughs> Oxyfern seed. Nice. Actually, not that great. Hello, friends. Glacier Wolf. Good to see you again. Oh, welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Uh, could we get this swept up immediately, please? Why is there slime on the ground? Oh, of course they're all asleep. Uh, this pump is not working yet because... Because this pipe isn't finished. Because it's unreachable.
Okay. We really need more of this water. Uh, we're kind of at the saturation point. It's effectively. I guess I should have put the pump down here. I can still do that. No, 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 we want- we don't want to let the steam out. Don't put the pump down here. That was correct of old me. <laughs> Alright, can we mop this up then? What is that? Salt water. And our oxygen? Uh, I thought something like this might happen. Actually, I'm not entirely... Oh. Is that why? No? This gas is just trying to go to the nearest consumer. Oh? What? I don't... I don't understand. Will this gas go through to the other side if it's full? Oh, it's actually... Oh, we got rid of the uh, carbon in this tile. Fantastic. Could we maybe add some sensors over here? Yeah, that actually looks like it's enough already. Didn't need to add this. But on the other hand... It certainly wouldn't hurt. I think the slime storage space is full. No, this is it right here. So we can see this thing in action. I'll snip the wire so that it won't work until we're looking at it. Alright, that's what I want to see. So as the air pressure in this area increases, it should push the CO2 out to the side down here. That's the idea anyway. Uh, we need more automation wire. And I guess I can't have a plant here at the same time. Damn it. I should have just removed some of the crown molding. settings across here fantastic oh 
What's the pressure like? Only 1200. It's not that much. Not yet, anyway. What's the pressure like for CO2? Uh, twenty-eight point eight grams. So it's really only staying here because, like, you can't have the gases mix on a per tile basis. Hmm. I don't think the air pressure is going to push the CO2 to the left, like I was hoping it would. Well, we know from the hydrogen experience that that that'll happen eventually. But with only a two tile wide area here, it might not work out so well. No partial pressure, actually falling gases are more likely to go right. Oh yeah, I forgot about that. Zaka Luca, good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Did we get our pipes done? Except for some of the upgrades. Fantastic. Uh, did we not queue this up? There we go. Okay. Temperature is normalizing. And we're still slightly too hot. Oh wow, that is way too much coolant taken out of the main loop. Uh, in fact, this liquid reservoir is full. Whoops. Let's put some back in. And I'm just going to do that here. Why is it, like, hiccuping like that? That's actually... So half of it is going back to the main loop, and half of it is going through the cooler and staying in this loop. So it should be pretty easy. It's going to be a bit slow to drain that way. Hmm. I'll do it this way for now. And we just want to run this until this thing's nearly empty. Ice temp shift plates work too. Ice temp shift plates. You can use a fan. No, the only fan is actually just... It just cools things a bit. I don't think it actually pushes air around. Alright, so this is going down. Uh, surprisingly slowly. Once it gets down to green, I'll change that pipe back. And hopefully we'll get appropriate levels-ish in both coolant loops until... Uh, eight, nine cycles pass. And then we get more slush, and the problem sorts itself out. Boop, 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 boop. Also, this will indirectly cool the plants, because we won't be pumping as hot water uh, into the hydroponic farms. Although, we need the plants to actually consume water to make it move first. For that, they need to be cool enough to grow, so it's a little bit of a catch-22, if not for the other coolant loop, the original one.
All right. Uh, we're almost down to green. There we go. All right, so this is going to go back here. That should be enough to keep the entire... Um, the entire tertiary pulling loop uh, saturated. And we'll not have quite so many gaps in our main cooling loop. We've got a row of bristle blossom growing again. Fantastic. 30.4 degrees, 31.4 degrees. That's a lot worse down here. Build a rocket and get some ice from the ice planet. Easy. Uh, well, I've never done that before. Also... Wouldn't we just cook ourselves to death before we build the rocket? Oh, what's this? Uh, hugging spree. Oh. How do we get dupe traffic through here? I guess we could open the doors, and then the pips will escape, and they have to keep getting wrangled back in. Uh, I don't think that's really much of a solution. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. Now that our coolant loop is set up properly. Uh, temperature in here is shifting pretty quickly, actually. This area obviously won't cool as quickly because it's further from the coolant pipes but it's already down to 38 39 degrees next time i'll build space for a coolant loop into uh into the water reservoir design from the beginning. And we really ended up with just a water sea in this room. Works out a lot more elegantly when we don't store polluted water in the same room. Weirdly enough. But we're actually totally out of water now. Oh, I see why. Hmm, is this a problem? Yeah, it would be a problem. Let's be more aggressive for the moment with how we take in our water. Is it better to put the coolant loops higher so that the hot air naturally gets pushed to steam? Uh, pushed to them. Um... I don't know. I guess so, yeah. Although... The conductivity of the air is not... Is not as good as just having coolant pipe over what you want to cool. What's that? Rotten fried mushroom. Okay. How much steel do we have now? 2.6 tons. It takes 500 to make one of these doors. What's the... What's the most severe angle that we've seen an asteroid come in at? If we just put... Hmm... Uh, I 
I want to figure out an auto miner. Oh, wait, wait, wait. We have experiments to run. Speaking of auto miners. Robo miner, no power. Alright, let's see how this works. It doesn't need to be connected to an automation. Nope. Uh, to a shipping thing, that is. I guess we just put a sweeper wherever. Okay, next question. Um, will a sweeper catch something that the robo miner is dropping? I need to know. It's not not that it's uh, gonna be relevant to our build, but I would love to find out. Yes? I never got past cycle 20 or something, so just asking really. If you add vent floors to the coolant room, would that hot pocket dissipate quicker? Vent floors? Vent floors to the coolant room. Uh, we don't really have a coolant room. We have a room that gets hot because heat is being pumped to it. And we definitely don't want heat escaping from there insofar as we can. Speaking of heat, we're up to 136 degrees. Nice. Let's just confirm that our steam turbine is ready to work. It is indeed. And apparently this is like 40% efficient for our steam turbine. Uh, I think someone said the maximum temperature, like maximum efficiency is 200 degrees. Uh, how much power are we getting out of it right now? 336 watts. Yeah, I want this to not kick in until it's hotter. I do wonder if overall it'll be more efficient if we wait for hotter steam or not. I meant that bit at the bottom has the cool air in it and the pipes. That bit at the bottom has the cool air and the pipes. Do you mean with the water reservoir room? I mean, there's no oxygen in here, it's all chlorine, but that's sort of... Oh, you mean like this area is a lot cooler because we can't put the uh, coolant pipes behind this stuff. How's our gas doing here? Doesn't really seem to be making a difference. Disabled by automation grid. Oh, because this isn't detecting CO2. Okay. Right then. Uh, let's see... We're gonna have to connect this to some stuff, right? Like, uh... I don't remember how this works. Do we connect it straight to conveyor rail, or... Does it have to, like... Transport solar materials on a track between conveyor loader and conveyor receptacle. Unload solid materials from a conveyor rail into storage. I think we need this, right? I actually can't remember. It was a bit counterintuitive. Unload solid materials from a conveyor rail into storage? 
Uh, onto the floor. That's what I want. That, that'll... That'll be enough to test this, right? Assuming the first step is correct. Sweeper sweeps two containers. You need a loader. Oh. Okay. Container. So what? Conveyor loader? Or... Does it have to be from the shipping category? Or do we just put a container close to it? From conveyor, onto conveyor rail. I think we had to use one of these, right? Conveyor loader. You need a conveyor loader. Okay. So do we just put it here? Onto conveyor rail. And then like this. And I presume that's going to need power as well. Let's get some ladders over here. So, what else uses a conveyor loader? Only loads the resources of your choosing. Okay, so it acts as a filter at least. Otherwise, it would seem to be an unnecessary step. So, we, we could actually have all of our auto mining bring resources all the way down into the base. Who's getting scalded? What were you doing here? There shouldn't be any need to go up here. Uh, did it overheat? I don't think doors can overheat. Okay, manual airlock doors it looks like can't overheat. Maybe they were coming for resources? That doesn't seem likely. Uh, allow manual use. Allow duplicants to manually manage these storage materials. Okay. We're just going to take in everything. Robo Jumper, good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. All right, uh, let's connect this up and see what happens. Wait, no conveyor receptacle. What? What do you mean? Did I not connect this? Loader receptacle. Uh, so, do we need three things just to put something onto a conveyor? Or am I missing something? I guess we can turn off the miner until we get the rest of it working. Um... No conveyor receptacle. Probably did not connect it to rail, or the rail is just not built yet. Oh, it looks like the rail is just not built yet. But it says no conveyor receptacle... ...when there's specifically a thing called conveyor receptacle. But I'm guessing the conveyor chute counts as a receptacle. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Alright, now we're in business. 
Okay. Now, actually, I'm going to wait till the auto sweeper finishes. Anytime now. Okay. And then we'll switch this on. And we'll see if it catches this over here. The range of the Robo Miner is a lot more than the Auto Sweeper. Alright, slow motion. Let's go. Oh. Wait, it did get it, even though it dropped to the ground. <laughs> Nice. Good catch. Magic fingers. So we're going to see this two more times. Take this one. Here we go. It definitely dropped to the ground, but then it got picked up anyway. Or at least some of it did. One unit of it. Whatever the auto sweeper can pick up in one go is what got picked up. Okay. I might just leave this here as a little demonstration. So I don't have to learn this all over again next time. You know, I've seen... I've heard of people making a so-called evolution chamber. Um, to automate management of... Uh-oh. Did we lose our hatches? I think we lost our hatches. Um, maybe I was a bit too aggressive in eating the eggs or something. Hatchling egg, sage hatchling egg, smooth hatchling egg. I think we somehow ended up not reproducing the stone hatches. Oops. I don't suppose we have a hatch somewhere? Oh, there's one. And it's a stone hatch. And it's tame. And it's got three days to live. Oh no. Um, I don't suppose it's going to lay an egg. Uh, we could do Slicksters. We've already got some Slicksters down below. And we don't have the infrastructure for them right now. I can't set priority on actually moving the stone hatch, apparently. Uh, how about this? Make the critter drop off a high priority. No, don't do it tomorrow. You just tied up the poor thing. He's got two days to live. Ah. Oh. Cubes are cruel creatures. Oh, what's this? Damage overheating. Uh, it is indeed. Oh, because it's immersed in steam. You just unmined new hatch? Unmined? What do you mean? What are we bonking for?
Oh, do you mean over here? As in I mined one up? No? Digged. Okay. I don't see one though. Robo miner undug a hatch. Okay. But I don't know where it got to. Wait, did we throw the hatch through the conveyor chutes? <laughs> that would have been rude. Why is it taking so long to do this? Come on now. Oh, I think I see why. No? We don't specify what type of hatches here, do we? Hatch, hatchling... We do. Okay. In fact, get rid of the normal hatches. Alright. Uh, you've got... Two and a bit cycles to lay an egg. Stone hatchling, we're counting on you. There, brown pile? Brown pile. Oh! <laughs> well, how about that? Alright, we'll see if the stone hatch breeds, because I don't actually want regular hatches. Uh, if we're lucky, we won't have to start over trying to breed stone hatches. Uh, let's do what I should have done before. And we'll make this pump out of gold amalgam. Uh, that should be more than enough. Plus 50 degrees. Don't think we need to waste steel on this. Yeah, that Veldak getting scolded isn't too surprising. It's not going to kill him that quickly. But how about you take a nap, Veldak? Oh, he's already assigned himself to it. Okay, so that mod is working beautifully. Now then. Uh, now what? We've got six idle. We're not doing enough. Uh, how much steel do we have now? 2.7 tons? It's a good start. We've sorted out our water situation. We've sorted out our heating situation. Uh, our food situation is, despite appearances, actually pretty good. Cool salt slush will be coming in in five cycles. Our coolant is suboptimal at the moment, but it's probably probably fine for now. I'm going to disconnect power to our industry for now until things cool down a bit more actually it shouldn't make that much difference because the main cooling loop doesn't come particularly close yeah no that should be fine let's reconnect that I could borrow some of the slush from here, but I don't feel like it. How much is in here? What? How is that full? Um. Why is our tertiary cooling loop completely full? Is 
Is it still connected somewhere else? I don't think it is. Make sure this isn't connected. Oh. Wait, no, that's... That should be fine. It's not actually going through here. Maybe it should. I could just put a bridge here temporarily. Well, no, but we can just do that instead. But I don't understand how we had, like... We emptied this down to green earlier, and then disconnected it from the main loop. And then this is full now. Let's stop putting... Well, we have stopped putting fluid in, actually. I think I need to wait until the input has reached all the way over here. Well, that is when it'll start draining anyway. Oh, and I don't have enough jobs for the dupes right now. Um, could I make some steps towards... towards our space project? What's the overheat temperature? 75. We're going to make this out of steel up here. And... Oh, it doesn't dig abyssalite. That's good. But I think we'll put this here. And... Is that... How that fits. That's pretty good. Robo Miner goes here. Uh, I would love to put some solar panels in, but we need extreme cooling before we do that. The space scanners are actually not susceptible to heat at all. So... I would love to see what happens if it's hard to tell which tiles this takes up I don't like that I think it's actually two by oh wow okay we can fit more of these than I thought yeah What are new achievements you got? Uh, let's see. Tubes. One here. Art. And block a media from hitting your base with a bunker door. Fantastic. Okay. Uh, I think... I want... This. Actually, I want to use the maximum range with the... With the diggy diggy. So, where that abyssalite is. So, in the end, it's going to look something like this. Um, we don't technically need to build the bunker tiles, uh, the yeah, bunker tiles. If we we can just use a regolith as our bunker tiles if we want. 
but I'd like to be able to run automation wire through here and stuff anyway. I'm not actually going to build this many space scanners just yet. I just want to leave room for them. And I don't suppose I suppose these tiles are bunker like So before, well, if we dig through this regolith, we're going to have to have bunker tiles up here anyway. I'm curious to see if we ever get asteroids squeaking through here. So we'll just leave that like so for the moment. We can't exactly put the ladder on the opposite side. Unless... What if, to start with, we do something like this? And then the dupes would be able to go over here. we can get that built, right? That vole is living dangerously. Alright, we'll see how that goes. We don't actually need this bunker door anymore. Um, but I will probably continue using this scanner. We were able to get away with lead uh, wires, right? For automation wire? Yeah. And for power... Fully exploiting how certain things can't overheat. And we're going to want wire up here. Actually... Uh-oh. I think these ladders might get wrecked. Before the build is done. Uh, I think... Whoops, whoops, whoops. I think before we dig down here, we should... Make sure that we can reach up here. Seems good. And the bunker doors are, of course, going to be a higher priority. Actually, can we just... Uh, why it goes... Well, let's do the doors first. Bunker door, priority six. And the rest... Priority five. Wait, what? There we go. And 
and automation wire. It's kind of important, actually. Then again, red signal means it's closed. So it's not that urgent. Um, I don't think we want automation wire touching the auto miner. In fact, I can't think of a single reason why we would ever want to turn it off. So we'll just do this like so. Oh, neat, I'm still alive. Yeah, no one's died in a long time. Don't worry about it, it's fine. We'll reclaim that steel, actually. Alright, back to our main base. What's happening? We're not growing food. Why not? 30.5 degrees, 32, 33. Uh... I forgot to check on this. Oh, oh, oh. It's actually pretty much at the perfect level. We might have just missed the boat here. To have coolant all the way through the loop. Just barely. looking a bit sad. Hmm. I suppose we could have a coolant loop that uses water for the hydro plants. That would be really easy to keep them cool. something to consider in the future. It'd be a lot neater with the pipes as well. Basically just have water snaking through like this. And we'll eventually make it a coolant loop. All three of our aqua tuners are doing their thing. Oh, steam is working. Wait, what? Disabled by automation grid. It just shows the last level of the percentage from before. That's a massive cooling setup? Yeah. It's pretty good. I like it. I mean, obviously we're going to iterate on it next time. But it's pretty good for... Not exactly a first try. Well, it's kind of mostly a first try. Uh, it looks like that tertiary coolant loop is actually perfectly saturated, but with a gap in the reservoir. Liquid reservoir, storing 140, 150, 160. Why is it stopping it? Oh, oh, I think I forgot to... No? I was going to say, I think I forgot to set it up so that the fluid would loop even when the aqua tuner isn't running. But that's not true. It is... it's got the same setup, which will prioritize output from the aqua tuner, but let everything else through. So why is it stopping and starting? I don't understand. And now it's gaining fluid in here? What? It's It keeps saying pipe blocked for the output. Huh. 
Oh. Oh, because the aqua tuner is running. Wait, no, that doesn't quite make sense. Pipe blocked. How can the pipe be blocked? What? We see it flowing in at full speed to the reservoir. The reservoir is gaining fluid because the output pipe is blocked. The input... Oh, oh, something's happening down here, I think. Because... This is moving constantly, but this is stopping and starting. Okay, so where... Where does this change? It doesn't. It's going in at full speed over here. What? Oh, I found it, I found it, I found it. God oh, damn it. Okay. That's our tertiary coolant loop moving at full speed. Do the aqua tuners have a processing time so you'd need more to handle the volume? Well, there's only so much going in in the input pipe. Like, we're bottlenecked here, we're bottlenecked here. And w with a liquid bridge we set it up so that the fluid can go into the aqua tuner and or it can go around the aqua tuner. But with the bridge set up, the aqua tuner output is high priority. Um, but yeah, it was this little connection here that I either didn't notice in the first place or forgot about. There's only 2.6 cycles before our other fluid system gets filled up automatically. We've got 214,000 calories. Um, I think we can just leave it now. That This is a good amount of slack in the in the coolant loop, the third one. Casually enjoying some spaghetti, indeed. Wait, you call this, you call this spaghetti casual? How dare you? This is primo spaghetti. There's not much polluted water. Wait, why is, why are you like, this. Oh, because this is a consumer, not a producer. Polluted water is not getting taken in here because that hardly ever happens. It's actually really low throughput. Uh, that's not a lot of polluted oxygen. It's really thin, actually, because the natural gas is thin as well. Okay, that's fine. Uh, I guess that means we can pay attention to space again. How's our water supply? It's non-zero. <laughs> but yeah, I'd like to leave that running for now. Why don't I... Leave this set as it should be, and just... No, wait, I can't leave the automation wire there. Disconnected, because it'll give a red signal. You know what? I should just move this down a bit. The exact same hydro sensor. So that we stop getting this half a chug of water.
Sorry, Carenza. Okay. Decon that one. Copy settings. Actually, it should be set above 500 kilo. Or something. We need the wire as well. One view I feel this game is missing is the ability to hover over a pipe and have all connected pipe segments highlighted. That would definitely help. Hyper Visualizer mod Factorio uh, does a very good job of that sort of thing. Alright, so how are we looking up here? Building construction is looking a little slow. Um, I get the feeling that some automation wire got damaged. I think... Oh, this is Mafic Rock. Okay. Alright, that's going to take a little time to get done. Um, I would kind of like to exploit the infinite copper and infinite heat source over here. It's going to come out really, really hot. So it shouldn't be difficult to do some steam engines. Um, we could go with... In fact, I don't know how many steam engines we would need... To delete that heat. We're not going to need any, like, aqua tuners this time. It, the... The copper comes out at 2200 degrees. And if we build directly above it... Not with insulation tiles here, but... Uh, this one should probably be ceramic. Actually. Insulation tile, ceramic. And hopefully the copper won't just melt our insulated tiles. In fact, how am I supposed to get like a ladder down here or something. I guess airlocks don't melt? Uh. Maybe a jetpack to go down there? You could try to calculate how much uh, heat you'd need to delete in a single cycle of the volcano, and you'd get how many steam turbines you'd need. It'll come out as fluid, right? So once it covers itself, just like any other geyser, it's going to stop. And in order to... In order to get it not to be fluid, we just have to cool it enough. At what temperature does it stop being fluid? Uh, wow, it's actually only like 300 degrees short of being gas there. 1,083 degrees. <laughs> hmm... Well, the first thing we're going to do is, like, dig this area out, but not this tile. Not until we're ready. For the first version of this, I definitely don't want to have the area where the volcano can erupt to, to be very large.
The biggest question is, how do we give... Maybe we don't give the dupes access to this room, is what I was going to say. Maybe we use a robo-miner, but it's going to overheat. Hmm... I don't see how we could insulate a robo miner that could pick up like even steel is nowhere near good enough to keep this cool enough if it can pick up stuff from the same room. There's no way it can reach through like, airflow tiles, right? Even if it could, it would still probably get too hot just from... gas? If we make it a... If we make it a vacuum... Uh... Unreadable name? Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. What's the temperature of the copper in the volcano? 2200 degrees. It's very hot. To say the least. Can we build an airlock over a volcano? No, that would be way too easy. If we could tell the vol if, if we could tell the volcano to just stop when it suits us. Hmm. If we make this a vacuum, and then the molten, molten copper comes out, well, if it is a vacuum, then the heat isn't going to transfer up here for our steam engines very well. The question is how much heat is in one kilogram of copper? The answer is yes. A lot. 48 seconds every 827. That's not a lot. That's kind of good. Active period requires analysis. Do we not... Have we not analyzed this? Don't tell me I need to... No, that's terrifying. I... I don't wanna... I don't wanna have to make the volcano active in order to analyze it. We've had ladders down here before. I'm pretty sure we had access to this. Three eight six DTU per degree Celsius for one kilogram of copper. It's dormant. What could go wrong? What could go wrong is it wants to uh, it, it wants to erupt right now, right the instant that I dig this. That's our temp. Thirty one point five, thirty two. Why is it hotter up here now? It's inverted. It used to be colder up the top. Well, as long as we get producing... Look, it, it's, it's less than one cycle before we get our slush back. Then we'll be able to cool this properly, then we'll get our food back. Um, I th think I should stop building the automation wire. until we can get the bunker doors built. Actually, the deeps can climb over that. Maybe I should have the transit tube go all the way over here.
perfect. Good job, Beldak. You gotta delete about 850,000 DTU to cool that one kilogram of copper down to 25. Yep. That is easy. <laughs> uh huh. Well, I'm not thinking of it primarily as a source of copper. I'm thinking of it as a source of steam power. Oh, is this not connected? There we go. Give me those bunker tiles. Or bunker doors, rather. Good job, my trim. Is this reachable now? Yes. Yes, it is. Uh, don't worry about the automation wire just yet. Volcanoes aren't very reliable power sources as they go dormant. Yeah, but uh, that, what is it, 20-something seconds of eruption is going to give us heat. It, it's going to keep steam at a high enough temperature for maximum steam turbine efficiency for a long time. Are you stuck? There you go. Fantastic. So, let's see. Steam turbine... I'm hoping it's one tile wider than I want it to be. No. Uh, how small should I, could I make it? Well, we need room for steam itself. Probably just the smallest possible room for steam would make sense, right? We'll make it two, two tiles tall so the dupes can get in. I'm just kind of thinking out loud here. That magma down there more promising for steam power? Where does it come from though, the heat? I think it's just a finite source, right? It's actually a lot cooler than the molten copper is going to be. How's our water supply? How much is this? 200? I just want to make sure there's enough water that we don't get uh, small packets of water coming in. Seems good. And is that slush I see? Next dormancy. Alright, so 109.3 cycles out of every 174 when it is active. Oh, here we go. Eruption period in 250 seconds. No, wait. 253 seconds every 600. That's what we're looking at. Oh, here we go. Erupts in 0.2 cycles. It's about time. Uh, sure, we'll take some shine nymphs. How's our space thing looking? It's getting there. 
under construction. Errands. Current errand. Kevin is on the case. Fantastic. Uh, we do need these bunker tiles over here as well. Okay, good. We've already got a system where this is sort of lower priority power. Well, it's not exactly lower priority power. We're closing the doors if battery charge drops below 50%. Speaking of which, incoming objects? Uh, should we try and finish this? I'm a little bit scared. I think it's going to be close. We're so close. Good job, Sloder. Very good job indeed. And we've already have had an asteroid crash on top of this door. Um, alright. Just from the fact that automation wire has to go into these, uh, bunker doors, that alone, uh, tells us that, like, an asteroid hitting here isn't going to break anything that's on the other side of the door or anything. So literally just one tile of bunker door is going to be enough to protect this stuff if we want to. About 500k DTUs a second of heat. Nice. Oh, that sound though. So now we can build this out. And the automation wire. Wait, I can't put a bridge here, can I? No, that would be too convenient. Half of a turbine would suffice? Somebody bring the chainsaw? Wait, what? Alright, I'll leave that as it is for the moment. Um, what was next? How's our coolant loop looking? Uh, not that healthy just yet, because we're not putting that much slush in. Oh, here we go. Our up's in 85 seconds. Fantastic. So just one steam turbine, you reckon? Let's say we put it here. I guess it doesn't matter if... Okay, if we have a manual airlock like this, heat is going to get through here into here, and that's fine. And then... We really need a super strict uh, heat airlock. L let's call it a heat lock. Uh, we need a system that absolutely prevents heat from escaping but lets dupes in, uh, but we'll have sensors that only let them in when the temperature's low enough. So these don't... Oh, but... 
Is it okay if the water falls down here sometimes? Probably. This whole thing could end up being a steam room. Right? What if molten copper meets water? I don't think anything bad is going to happen, as far as we're concerned. Atmo suit prevents scalding. Does it prevent scalding at any temperature, though? Is th Are there not limits to the Atmo suits? Atmo suit. That's... That's not very helpful. Uh. The water's gonna melt? Yes. That is what's gonna happen. Alright, so we definitely need uh, insulation tiles here. And we need a very strict... Uh, airlock system. So, like... I guess if we use the modded airlock... What do we have happening here? Gas gets in from the outside and it gets a bit hot. We might need to make our uh, our oxygen pump out of steel, right? Even for the brief moment that air from the outside gets sucked into the space uh, between the modded airlocks. So we make this out of steel. That's not our main elevator, is it? No. How much ceramic do we have? Uh, zero. That's not great. Well, we're just going to wait for more. This isn't like a high priority project. What is molten ice? It's ice magma? Indeed. I really don't know... Wait, a ladder's, Im a ladder's immortal, apart from if they get hit, hit by meteors. Enables vertical mobility for duplicants. Yep, yeah, yeah, ladders appear to be immortal. So we can just have that like so. And we would have to have the duplicants pick up the copper manually. Because an auto sweeper can overheat and we can't keep it cool enough. Wait, no, we don't need the air pump. Well, we will temporarily need an air pump in here. Uh, just to clear it out once. But if we use modded airlock on both sides... Then we can get a vacuum here that will stay there forever. Kind of like you would think would be in the middle of the airlock, uh, the modded airlock door but it actually just counts as one big building um, that will transfer heat across. Alright, how are we going on making ceramic? We need clay and coal, and we've got lots of that. Uh, it's just that it's going to produce a bunch of heat and we're bottlenecking on heat can we make this a higher priority 
Especially since it's just a drop it off and go kind of thing. What temperature are we at? We are... We're looking for below zero. These two have to be red. So we're going through a knot gate. Okay, cool. Waiting for materials. What was it? Clay and coal. I'll put a storage right here for that. And anything else that goes in this room in particular. So we want... Clay, coal... Um, I wish I could set different request amounts for different materials in here. Or is it... I don't suppose it's going to bring, like, one ton of each of these at a high priority? Or is it going to stop at one ton? We also need... Coal. Where is coal? Consumable ore. Coal. And clay. Where is clay? It's not under agriculture, right? Compostable, that reminds me. I have to do some manual shuffling to make that happen. Uh, let's see. I think I had to set this as... Why is it empty? Compostable blossom seed. We've only got 330 kilograms, actually. We can wait. Wait, where was I going? Oh, yeah. Uh, clay and coal? We're looking for clay. It's not organic, it's not miscellaneous, it's not raw material. Uh, industrial ingredients? No. Where is clay? Clay solid. It doesn't tell us what category it's in. Do we have any clay? We do. Cultivate... Cultivable soil. Okay. Fantastic. Cultivable soil. Clay. Nice. Alright, let's see. Will this give it... Will this give us one ton of each of those, or what? I think not. Alright. It's probably going to fill up with one thing or the other, though. Which means we need a single storage bin for each resource if we really want this convenience. Well, this will help anyway. How much coal do we have? 1.6 tons. Not a lot. Oh, right, we don't have hatches, and it looks like our old one did die. Unfortunate. Okay, let's drop off hatches and hatchlings. Could I just bring the critter egg here? That might be a good idea. What was this tank for? Oxygen. Crit to egg. Uh, hatchling egg. And then sweep this up. Oh, that was quick. I didn't even see an errand. 
Wait, where is it going? Uh-oh. Oh no. Don't tell me. No, no, no. I did disable tracking it. Uh, it's already in here. Fantastic. Alright. So, if it's born in this room, even though it wasn't dropped by one of our tame critters, does that mean it's going to grow up tame automatically? I don't have to make any further actions? Ooh, our steam is over 150. And our steam turbine is quite locked. Uh-oh. Liquid vent over pressure. Why is it taking damage? It doesn't look like it's damaged by heat or anything. Overpressure 1000 kilos. Wait, is the gas pressure too high for the liquid? What? What? Just Jack, good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. This doesn't have a heat... Like, it doesn't matter what material we build this out of heat-wise. That's a lot of steam, indeed. The pipe segment took damage because the water inside turned to steam. But I'm already running it through insulated pipe. What am I supposed to do? We can't make this out of steel or something. Water is 95 degrees and gets turned back to steam in the pipe. So how am I supposed to cycle it back? Ninety-four point eight, ninety-four. It's only ninety-four degrees. What? Now it's just not happening. Huh? Was it a one-off? Like... Something that only happens during the initial state? Lower the pressure? I can't really do that. At least, not easily. Liquid vent over pressure. Hmm. Open the door easy? <laughs> oh no. So sometimes it's over pressure. Now that the whole room is flashed to steam, it looks like it can manage. Hmm. I can't tell. I can't tell if this is safe now. An easy way is to have an overflow from the steam turbine output somewhere else. I don't really want to do that, though. Like, we're going to have to put water back in. It, it's just going to be the same thing with extra steps. So when the turbine output is over pressure, the water goes to a different place. I guess I could connect all of these together so they they can use all of these outputs at the same time. No, the longer the water is in here, the worse it's going to be. Can we make better insulated pipe? Let's see. Overheat temperature. Slow heating. That's probably going to help. I imagine.
Oh, it's getting hot in here. 62 degrees. What have we built this out of? Lead. Fantastic. Overheat temperature of a steam turbine is a thousand degrees. But... Okay, so we don't actually have to worry about that. But if it get if the steam turbine itself gets too hot, it doesn't run, right? Or something. Um did we We need to upgrade our insulated tiles, I think. Hmm. And here I thought we had this uh, solved. Shut it off for a bit till it recondenses and then mop it? No. If we... If we let the steam get even hotter... We're going to be deleting more heat with each cycle, right? If we let it... If we use it when the steam is colder... Then the liquid coming out is still going to be just over... Just under 100 degrees, regardless, right? Hmm... Seems to be working. Regardless, I think we can try waiting till this gets to 200. Let's see how that goes. Steam turbines are cooling down quite rapidly, actually. If we build more steam turbines, then the individual steam turbines are gonna not get as hot. Is this right? I think it is. Yeah, that looks right. Is that a cooling loop with the salt water? Yes. Turbine only exchanges heat at its base, so that loop will only be cooling air and not the turbine directly. Yeah, I'm aware of that. Um, we could probably stand to make it radiant, though. Didn't realize just how hot this room would get. Also, it would help if, uh, if we could hurry up and get the slush to completely fill our cooling loop. Which is happening. Um, it's just taking a little time. So we'll let it bank more heat. Uh, by the time it reaches 200 degrees we should have all of this upgraded. We should have uh, slush properly filling our coolant loop again. Our main coolant loop. Let's see how that goes. I don't necessarily want to try too hard to keep the heat in this room. I think it's fine if it leaks out over here, especially if these are radiant pipes. Just make it all radiant, why not?
Okay. I'm gonna save it. Oh, wait. Shamala. I'm gonna save it just in case. And we'll take a short break. Just double check. Everyone's alive. Good. Okay. Uh, we'll do some words on stream in the meantime. And I'll leave the game running, see what happens. I'm not alive? Wait, what? Alright, is this thing set up properly? Seems good. We'll start words on stream in about 30 seconds. I'll be back in a few minutes. Good luck. Wait, why is this not... Why is my tab thing not working in chat? Okay, I'll try that. Uh, we'll start words on stream in about 30 seconds. I'll be back in a few minutes. Good luck, have fun, and I'll see you soon.
Okay, one more and then we'll get back to Oni. Oh no. We'll fix that later. Okay, how'd we do? Let's continue with Oni, shall we? Fantastic, nicely done. Pause that. And I wanted to fix this automation wire. I don't understand why pipe blocked. Wait, how's the pipe blocked? What? Liquid vent over pressure. Uh oh. Hmm. That is a little bit surprising. What kind of pressure are we talking here? It's only a thousand and forty six. It's like the same as water. Uh, it, it's like the same mass as water. Which I guess is too much. Hmm. Well. We could take some of the water out, I guess. Overheat temperature 75, that's fine, but let's not risk it. I participated? Good job. Okay. Um, let's... I guess... Take this over here. Hmm... I hope there's not going to be some terrible effect from connecting those up. We can always trim it later. But I'm thinking... We run the turbines a little bit, put some of the water in this reservoir, and then just stop putting in the reservoir once the pressure gets low enough in this room that the steam turbines can output normally.
and I'll just leave the one steam turbine enabled in the meantime. But we will need to correct that in time. Oh, now it's outputting. That didn't take much. Wait, it didn't take anything. I don't understand. Why was it not outputting before? We didn't change anything. Unless some of this went over here. That wouldn't change it. now. Why don't we give it a bit more slack though? I'll fill this up to like a few bars and we'll stop doing that. See how it goes. It's actually surprisingly slow. Let's let's make it one bar, and then see what kind. Of, uh, we did just get one bar. What was the pressure here? I think once the pressure drops below a thousand in the upper parts of the room, then we'll stop taking water away. Or at least get one tile down to a thousand. It's actually taking a surprisingly long while. I guess it's only this steam turbine that's sucking it up. I could enable another one. And another one. And another one. Uh, copy settings. Speaking of automation wire, let's snip this. Snip this. Put another sensor here. And snip this. And get rid of that. Fantastic. How's the pressure? 1028. Uh, I'm surprised. Are we actually going to get there before we fill this reservoir? It's probably already dropped enough that this will work consistently. I guess... Uh, we're emptying... This was full, and we're emptying like five tiles of water out of it if we fill the reservoir. So... Yeah, that's going to be about right, actually. It'll be close to maximum pressure. But it should have more than enough slack. No? Liquid vent over pressure. Over pressure 1k. Yeah, no, we might have to let more of this out.
Okay then. Why don't we remove this door? Actually, not the door. Remove this tile of ladder. And this one as well. And why can't I build this here? Oh. Hmm. I could temporarily put... A... No, I can't put a joint plate there. Uh, we'll just temporarily disconnect this from the power network. And then when we empty... Uh, empty the water from here. Can they move here? They actually can. Uh, when we... De deconstruct this, the water's not gonna escape. We can mop it up. Alright, pressure is well and truly below a thousand now. Fantastic. But I think I will just let that fill up. Then again, I guess there's no need. Let's snippy this and connect these back up. And I don't suppose there's anything wrong with having these connected, but there should be no need anyway. How hot is this water? It's not going to reach a, th a hundred. It's fine. Okay, get rid of that. Get rid of that. Get rid of that. You might be pleasantly surprised that they deconstruct liquid reservoirs into one plastic bottle. Oh, that makes it easy. Alright, so now we should... I'm surprised how long it's taking to delete the heat, actually. Let's get this automation set up properly. Oh. Um, by which I mean get all of them set up properly. Copy. Settings. So we're going to wait for 200 degrees... And then we'll run our steam turbines. And they're not getting very hot. I wonder if it was only getting over hot because it wasn't outputting earlier. I need that bottle at work, right? Fantastic. Okay then. I guess now we wait until it gets very hot indeed. Why is the main loop not working? It is working, there's just still quite the gap. Give me that brine. What are we waiting for? Uh, above zero. Get in there. There's no power? What? Hmm. Perhaps we should use our steam turbines. Nice. 
Actually, I think I would like two settings that cause the steam tur uh, turbines to activate. Either we've got uh, over 200 degrees steam, or our batteries are sufficiently low. And I think... As long as we have like a one-way gate, which I guess could just be a buffer gate with uh, a, a buffer or a filter gate with like a minimal setting. I wish we could have multiple wire colors like with Factorio. I guess I would need a filter gate for each steam turbine. On the other hand, I could just have one temperature sensor for the whole room. And the temperature does vary a bit, but we could just set it like two degrees higher. And then I would only need one uh, buffer gate up here. So we're going to connect the nearest battery. This battery has different settings from what we want, because we don't want to use coal, except as a last resort. Um, we've got so we've got literally zero coal. Maybe we should just not use coal at all at this point. It's not really helping anything. So I could connect this battery directly to the steam turbines. Nah, I want it to have the same settings as, like, our normal power plants. But I will leave that one disconnected, since we have literally zero coal. Where's our hatch? Critters, zero. Didn't we put an egg in here? Uh, capture critters. Some, something said cannot wrangle. That was, that was a Paku. Do I not have a better way to find critters? What happened to our one hatch? I don't get it. This is not good. Maybe we can print a hatch. We cannot print a hatch today. Oh, wait, wait, what's this? Borrowed Wild Happy. Okay, wrangle that sucker. And then Whiskers just stares at it. And there should be... An errand... Right now? Ranching? No pending deliveries. What? Stone hatch, stone hatchling, hatch, hatchling. This is a hatch. What actually happens if they auto wrangle excess population? Oh, wait. Let me guess. I'm guessing the auto sweeper can only pick up hatches that are wrangled. Incubator in hatch room for hatch eggs. That's a good idea. Incubator. That that was like really far away last time I looked at it. We just need refined metal. 240 watts. I don't think we're so power rich at the moment. 
uh, that we can casually do 240 watts. I need to set up another project. All the dupes are idle. Uh, some more ladders up here, please. We've got steel, don't we? Yeah, we do. It's unreachable, that's why. And power. Wait, this is how many? 240, 480 watts. This can do a thousand. Uh, that should be fine. Should be okay. Anyway, um, looks like our steam engines are working perfectly. What else was I about to do? I lost my train of thought. We were wrangling critters. Oh, it's unreachable. Wait, you can reach it to wrangle it, but you can't reach it to transport it? How did we get up here? Oh, was it because the auto digger got rid of a tile that we need to get there? That's probably why. Oh, come on. You guys were idle all day and I ask for one ladder and then you go to sleep? That's just rude. Alright, uh, we can actually just put a battery over here. I don't want it overheating. So I'll make it out of gold. Just to be safe. And then... Connect that here. Automation wire. I think I'll just do the one temperature sensor for all of them. So it's gonna be a gateless ore. And we're just gonna say... If temperature is above X degrees... Then turn on the steam engines. And if battery charge is low enough, turn on the steam engines. But we're going to prefer to bank heat so that we get better efficiency. I don't know, is it actually more efficient to wait till we get more heat? Or is it actually exactly the same on paper? But actually, some of the heat leaks out because the hotter it gets, the harder it is to contain it. So it's actually less efficient to wait for a higher temperature. They wrangle them with guns, but gotta actually reach them. Yes. Okay, wrangle again, please. Poor thing. Uh, this and this. And this can be deconstructed. And I think our circuit really is this simple. Just automation wire, sensor, and battery. Oh, we don't have that much gold. Should I risk lead? Nah, let's not be that greedy. Overheat temperature 75 degrees. Oh. We're probably not going to reach 75 degrees in this room, right? The steam turbines are running and it's not getting hot in here. It's probably fine. Okay, so if temperature reaches 205 degrees, we can assume we've got 200 degrees steam at all tiles here. 
And if battery is low enough, uh, turn the steam engines on anyway. Is it not more efficient? It is not more efficient, but serves as a steam battery. Okay. Alright, yeah, that's fine. Well, in that case, there's probably no harm in letting this get hotter and hotter indefinitely, right? I mean, at what point... 325 degrees. I believe that's our limit. So if our batteries if our batteries have been full and haven't dropped down to 5%, I could set the red signal at like 50%. But the point is, uh, if our batteries are okay, just bank steam, unless it gets so hot that it's going to threaten the thermo aqua tuners, and then delete heat. Scalding here? Or what are you holding? Storing materials 37.1 to. What, what are you carrying? It looks very hot. Uh, lead at 83.8 degrees. Well, there's your problem. The PB from the steam room, yeah. Granite at 161. Move debris into storage. As long as it's not like leaking out here because it's getting so hot that just being near this room is bad. It should be fine. I could definitely move this sensor down here like I did earlier. We're only trying to prevent uh, the pump from gulping in less than a full packet. Which it seems to do at the end of each set like this anyway. Well, it's still an improvement over... Never mind, let's set this higher. 200. Maybe 150? You what? Uh-oh. I thought something was damaged here. We're actually fine. There's a bit of CO2 down here. But that's okay. It's totally fine, actually. Alright. So... Do we not have wire? Hydro sensor, if above 150. We're actually going to find out pretty quickly. Well, it's a little harder to see the packets uh, with salt slush geysers, since it's the exact same color as the pipe view. One o eight. That's not going to activate until the steam geyser does, which is not going to be for another long while. Oh, we haven't analyzed it. Why don't we do that? Probably because we'll get scalded. Uh, I don't really want to go to the trouble of setting up a Atmos suit dock over here, though. Can we just let's not and say we did? I 
I like how someone got scolded two seconds after I said that. How are they getting scolded? Probably from picking up this weep items. And carrying them, more to the point. Uh, Matrim, don't stay in there for that long, please. Good grief. No, don't go back in there. Go to the cot. You are going to the cot now. Okay. But why are you standing in the 75 degree water to catch your breath when there's so much more oxygen over here? You absolute derp. We don't really need that piece of ladder. So some lucky person is going to analyze the steam vent. Oh, it is outputting. Uh, we'll wait until it stops. I, I said we'll wait until it stops. Did you come here for polluted dirt? I, I guess so. Okay then. We got three achievements. Oh. Did I just not get rid of those earlier? Yeah, I think I think that's how that works. Are we not researching right now? Let's finish researching art. Okay. How's this build going? Ooh, we're auto mining. Why is this one not powered? Because they just haven't built it yet? Unreachable build. How is this reachable, but this wasn't? And why is the bunker door open? Or it looks open anyway. It is doing the closing animation, but the regolith can't get through. So I guess it's fine? Nice. Alright, there's our infinite mine. Oh, wow. Oh, the little resources get bounced about by the uh, medias. Fascinating. Well, that seems to be doing okay. How's our steel? We've still got 1300. Not bad. How much iron do we have? Five tons. We can get more iron from up here now. So we've got infinite iron. If you put radiant pipes in space, do they cool quicker or freeze? Uh, I don't think they do anything of the sort. Because there's nothing to conduct heat to. Um, it's actually rather difficult to get rid of uh, to get rid of heat in space. You need radiators built specially. Why is this one not? Okay, what? Liquid vent over pressure, liquid vent over pressure. What? These two are working fine. 
pressure is only 867 on the left. And it's 1245 on the right. Does it matter how much pressure we have for the steam turbines to work, or is it only temperature? Does it somehow, if there's like one gram of steam, does it only matter what temperature it is? There are mods with radiator tiles, indeed. This is really weird. Uh, maybe we should link the uh, link these together actually. Considering that the packets of water that come out of the steam engines are not that big, uh, in fact they're one fifth of a pipe. Uh, this actually makes a ton of sense. And yet, this is not... Really? You can't... Oh, I think I see the problem. No? How about this? Yeah, so you can merge it together. I think what I... Uh... I think what I need to do is have all of the vents in series at the end of the pipe. I was going to say, but that's become a problem now. But we do have just enough room. Yeah, that's how that's going to work. It was trying to go to overpressured vent, yeah. Because it won't just... It'll try to go to the nearest building intake. And it won't change course if there's another way out. Okay then. Natural gas geyser erupts in 0.3 cycles. Over pressure. Wait, what? What do you mean over pressure? What's the pressure here? Uh, 1758 grams of polluted oxygen. How is there that much pressure here, but up here there's like 18 kilograms? There's hardly any natural gas. Okay, I think we need to get rid of this, uh, this bit of logic here. Gas pump disabled by automation grid. Uh, we're looking for natural gas and we're looking for... What is this, a buffer? Or a filter? Filter gate. We're looking for natural gas for one minute. Which is not happening. I think instead we should just detect any gas. We'll only stop if it's, like, getting close to being a vacuum or something. We're going to de detect gas pressure. Atmos sensor, here we go. Or we could simply detect natural gas. For zero seconds. I could turn this into a buffer gate instead. Oops. 
Uh, automation wire connect. And make this a buffer. Gas ne vents need less than 5 kilograms per ton of pressure. Yeah, I looked at the pressure here earlier and thought, well, it's definitely not 1500 or 1700 grams of pressure over here because in the corner it's barely anything. Uh, gas is being very weird. So, no wonder we haven't had as much power. Wait, what? Oh, I was going to add a buffer. Yeah, if we detect any natural gas, we're going to run it for, like, a minute. Or in other words, we have to go a minute without natural gas for the up to turn off. You know what? Make it five minutes. Oh, we can't. That's fine. 15 kilogram is not barely anything. The limit is 20. Oh, was I thinking grams? I think I misread the scale. <laughs> okay. That's probably why. Because here it's showing it as 1700 grams. And here it's showing it as 16 kilograms. And at the exact same time, we've got this natural gas geyser starting up again. Well, that's going to help. What about the one down here? Uh... Next activity, 2.2 cycles. So we're going to be rolling in power soon. I guess we could definitely afford that uh, incubator. How hot does this get? Oh, that's a lot of heat. 4.5 thousand DTUs per second. And to put it into perspective, the metal refinery is a bit over four times that. What's something that we run constantly that produces heat? Electrolyzer, pretty much. 1.5. So one incubator is worth like four of these if we consider that these will never actually run constantly. Because they'll eventually reach gas pressure or something. I, it's probably not that bad. Especially because we've got our coolant. We'll give it a try. We can always stop it. One incubator, please. Wait, wait, wait. Overheat temperature, 90 degrees. What temperature does it try to keep the eggs at? It's not telling us. Is this guy happy? He's, ha he's hungry and happy. He's got food, though. Wait, there are fried mushrooms in here? I think this was from when we had a little emergency. Sedimentary rock, zero. Fried mushroom, zero. Wait, did I disable sedimentary rock? Oh, that was for the sage hatch, hold on. Sage hatch, royal nymph? 
Royal Bug. What? Sedimentary Rock. Okay. Actually, okay, cool. But what have we got in here instead? Stone Hatch. Igneous Rock Granite. Uh... Obsidian Sedimentary Rock. Igneous Rock and Granite is all that we have here. Can a regular hatch eat that? Uh, might be quicker if I look at it this way. Whoa. I don't think they can eat igneous rock. Sedimentary rock. Okay. How about we have a second feeder here? Well, Electrolyzer itself is 1.5k DTU when online. The gas it produces is 75 degrees. Is that so? Uh, overheat temperature is 75 degrees. The gas doesn't come out at 75. Otherwise, we would have much bigger problems with heat here. Uh, egg, cuddle pip, egg, glossy draclet, continuous incubate. Oh, okay, we don't actually have to have one. Nice. Temperature's looking good. I like how that water's just sitting there at 90 degrees without bothering anything. It's very, very slowly cooling off, actually. That is probably the safest way to deal with it. And we actually have something beginning to resemble a supply of water here. So indirectly, we are now using the cool steam vent here as a power source. Because we have to cool the base, we're doing that by pumping heat to here, and then that becomes steam. It will of course not be as efficient as if we put a steam turbine above it. Well, it wouldn't be hot enough for that. That's what this is about down here. We're still waiting on a lot more ceramic for this build. Mouse over the oxygen in info tab. Uh, where are we mousing over? Do you mean... What? Oh, you mean the electrolyzer? It'll be at least 70 degrees C or hotter if the input materials are hotter. Huh. Then why... Why is it so cool here? Lloyd, thank you for the follow. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. If... If it says the oxygen comes out at 70 degrees, then how on earth does it cool this quickly? How much oxygen comes out? Uh, it's only 888 grams. That's actually not that slow. Um... Uh, I don't understand why we don't see more heat coming out of here. We 
because gas has low thermal capacity and gets quickly dissipated with nearby tiles. So the other tiles are a lot heavier, slash have more heat capacity. Oh, someone's sick. Food poisoning. Okay. That'll sort itself out. How's our build up here looking? No power. Oh, that's why it's no power. Okay. Let's finish this. What's this? Scan network quality is bad. Is that what this uh, notification is? How have we still not made these bunker tiles? Unreachable. Oh, don't tell me the ladders got destroyed. Or some or or the regolith that we were climbing got removed. That's probably it. No power, that is me on a Friday afternoon at work, indeed. Or if we mean you have no power here, that's every day at work. We're not growing an awful lot of mushrooms right now. What's the problem? Atmosphere. Why is there oxygen in here? What? Oh. Wait, no, what? We've got... Manual airlock... Uh, airflow tile up the top. Where did all the carbon di- Oh, I guess they- do they consume carbon dioxide, or the, do they just need it around them? Uh, it looks like they just need it around them. The dust caps do. Slime, negative 4,000 grams per cycle. Air pressure, CO2, temperature, darkness. That's it. I don't understand where the CO2 went. Did the air pressure here get high enough that the moment the door opened? No. We, we were trying to use air pressure to push CO2 to the side over here and it didn't work. I don't get it. Where else are we getting? Ooh. Uh, apparently we do have CO2 down here. Okay. I guess I should connect this back up the way it was. And here I thought, oh, we don't need this anymore. The door opening a hundred thousand times. It shouldn't have that much traffic, and when the dupes come in, they exhale. So, I don't know. Hmm. If we just... Hmm. If we make the room airtight, pump gas out, pump CO2 in, and then just have a manual airlock and the dupes go in and out, it should mostly be CO2 all the time, right? Maybe make entrance from the top? That's what I would normally do, but this was like already built and I repurposed it for dusk caps. Oh, that looks nasty. Um, but like... I mean, we've already got 
We've got a well to hold the dust caps, uh, the CO2 in. It just opens occasionally. And it's not like gas just rushes out as soon as we open it. We've got an airflow tile after all. I think we should just pump CO2 over here. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and guess that I can't have a gas element sensor here without digging up the plant. Yeah. I don't really see where else I could put a gas element sensor so we don't just pump CO2 here indefinitely. Oh, that was not very much. Not very much at all. We could go way down here for CO2. It just shifts the problem for a bit longer. Well. They're at least somewhat growing now. I don't know, I think I should probably rip this all up and start over. Although, I would like to fit it somehow in just three tiles like this. Um... Actually, I might do what I did before. And have the door up above. Just one tile of CO2 down below should be enough, right? Yeah, in fact, we can see that it's enough here. Because this is polluted oxygen. So, I'll move the door up one. And we won't have an airflow tile. And just to be sure, I'll make it a manual airlock as well. Because we tried this with pneumatic doors, and somehow we ended up with not a layer of CO2 like this. So we're going to use gravity, and we're going to keep the room sealed. Somewhat. That should... Probably be enough, right? Let's get rid of this vent because I think this room should be fine from now on. The only way the uh, polluted oxygen and oxygen is getting out is up through these vents most of the time. I'd like to do the same thing down here, but... but there's another room like this just above it. Body temperature. Okay, that's a different problem. We could just run our coolant through here as well. That might help. Gosha Gonzalez, thank you for the follow. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Oh, we're getting more CO2. Fantastic. Give that a little snippy. Actually, wait until the loop is finished first. It's 
speaking of which... Um, can I see... We do have a little bit of fluid in here. So that probably means the entire loop is saturated. Oh, that's good to see. Fantastic. Um, I think I will increase our target. For how much uh, fluid we want to have in reserve here. We have to keep it a bit empty, just a little bit, so the entire loop will keep moving at full speed. That's why we have the reservoir. But I definitely want to have some slack for like, if I decide to make another loop or make it longer or something. Uh, you know what? I'm not sure I even care about plastic right now. Let's get some spicy tofu. And I guess since this is weirdly hot over here... We could make some cheap insulation tiles. This is not so bad here. Nice. Alright, so we have power in abundance. How's the pressure spread over here? It's all less than a thousand. Actually, let me turn these steam engines on. Just so that we can see that they don't have trouble outputting. So this one should end up over pressure, and then more of the fluid will come over here. And yeah, that actually works quite well. Uh, this is actually 80% of what can fit through a pipe. So we could do five of these in a row under one pipe. Should be more than enough. Oh, this one's over pressure. This one's over pressure. This one is over pressure. Um, but if they're sucking steam in, that has to lower the pressure. Yeah, no, it looks like this can manage. Looks like it can manage just fine, actually. Alright. How's our space build coming? It is complete. Very, very nice. Very nice indeed. And thankfully, the power and automation doesn't get blocked by Regolith. Here comes more. Oh. Missing tile. Oh, does this only reactivate... ...when these doors are closed? Hmm. That's an interesting problem. Can we detect if there's a regolith here? I don't know that we can. I like how nobody told you about that. Well, it does say blind in the tags. I can't reenact the way I would have reacted to this. 
Hmm. I mean, I could just put this here, right? But then it'll get covered by regolith. How much does that help? It's not going to be perfect. That's obvious. Can we detect regolith? That is the question. Uh, I don't know that there is a way. Gas element, liquid element, timer. We could use a timer. Creates a timer to send green signals and red signals for specific amounts of time. That would probably be rather useful in this thing that we didn't quite get working right just because of signal timing, where we want something active just briefly during the day, um, but there's a little bit more to it than that. Okay, I'm going to have a little think about this, and let's do some words on stream. I'll take a little break. Need one anyway. We'll start words on stream in about 30 seconds. I'll be back in a few minutes. Good luck, have fun, and I'll see you soon.
Okay, let's continue, shall we? So I want to watch what happens as soon as this opens, in case I haven't, in case I've missed something. But I'm thinking the best option we have to detect regolith. Wait, what? Was this never connected? Or don't tell me. Don't tell me this could break from. No, surely not. Surely not. If this can break from um, an asteroid hit it, then hitting it, then I don't really see how we're supposed to automate the bunker doors. This was horrible. It did not register my word. Uh, was it because you'd just done a different word? Because you get locked out for a few seconds. So it's not just one person getting, like, three in a row. Okay, so... X seconds after we get a green signal up here... The regolith is going to fall out. The robo miner isn't going to work until we detect meteors incoming and we close the doors again. And then the robo miner will work. If we get green signal and have a timer. I guess it's not 10 seconds because we're at fast speed. So X seconds after the doors open, we've got regolith. What? What the? I just saw the... Are you kidding? Did I just see our wire break? From what? It just dropped, right? The lead melted? What temperature are we at? 320? Hold on, what's the melting point of lead? 327 degrees. Fair enough. That is a lot colder than I was expecting. Uh, okay. What other metal should we make this out of? I, I guess I can't see the melting temperature here. What's iron? Iron... Melting temperature 1534. That is probably sufficient. Yeah, that... Uh, that'll probably cut it. And I guess the same thing happened with the conductive wire. Okay. 324, 314, 329. Okay. So it's really just up here that we have to make it out of something a bit more expensive. And... Conductive wire... So it melted, but then immediately became a solid again? I guess it dripped down as fluid faster than I could notice, and then immediately solidified once it hit this cooler area. I noticed the uh, Robo Miner only stops working. the moment that the regolith can fall through. 
we've got printables. Let's do that first. We don't need another pip. Uh, this is fine. Okay. So, what signal are we on? Green for open. I think... What we need is a period of red signal X seconds after we first get the green signal. So how do we do that? Let's have a look at the timer. I'll just build one of those here. And maybe buffer and or filter gates? If the input is receiving a green signal... Let's see, we can either not put a signal through until we've received it for X seconds. I don't think that helps here. Or we can send it for longer after we receive a signal, which I don't think helps. We could have used, uh, of course, use a buffer or a series of buffers to delay a signal. I think we want to have a look at the timer. Not enough mass for the raindrop animation to kick in. I see. Green duration, red duration. Mode seconds, cycles, seconds, cycles. Huh. The cycle sensor... is basically just a worse timer, except we can tell exactly what part of the cycle it's going to be. But this thing doesn't take an input, it just outputs. So I think we are going to have to use, like, buffers and or... Whoa, bunker game? Wait, what? Engineers Fox? Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. So basically we need green signal just long enough for this to open. And then we need red signal just long enough to make sure that we've mined all of this. And then we need green signal again until we receive a uh, red signal or green signal if you like depending on how you look at it this does work it's just that it takes two cycles of meteors incoming before we get back to before we mine all of this So how are we going to do this? Signal counter? Count so many times a green signal has been received up to a chosen number. We're probably going to need one of these. Oh, that's big. Why is it so big? You could mount the laser on the wall. That would be admitting defeat. Besides, we don't get the same area out of it. We could mount it on the floor, but we pretty much get the same problem, if not worse, actually, because it's going to be covered in regolith. Powered bunker door needs 45 seconds. Thank you. Floor equals bad, yes. Uh, this is the only position that gives us the maximum coverage. We could just build more of them. I know they don't draw power while they're not working, but I want to go for the clever solution. So...
Well, let's build a signal counter, if only to look at what we can do with it. Weight plate? When an object or duplicate is placed atop it. This doesn't activate if regolith is on top of it, does it? And it probably is going to activate if there's, like, iron right here. Back in mine day, we had to mine all by hand. Well, the future is now, old man. I think it's... I think it's just going to have to be a complicated circuit that we make with some buffer gates. Maybe not even that complicated, to be honest. We could have a buffer and then a filter, and then parallel to that, a another buffer. So, buffer, buffer, filter. And the wiring is going to look something like this. I think that's probably it. Or, wait, what is a buffer going to do here? Hold on, which is which? Buffer and filter. Buffer sends a continuous signal after receiving a signal. Filter requires an amount of time. So I think I got that backwards. Only lets a green signal through if the input was received longer than the selected filter time. Uh, yeah, I think we need filters, for the most part. Filter, buffer, filter? No, that's not right. Filter, filter, buffer? No, I might have got it right the first time. <laughs> buffer gate? Is going to keep sending a signal for X amount of time. So we want this to go for 45 seconds so that we let the regolith through. Uh, I think we might need a pulse generator. This thing gives a green signal when stuff is incoming, right? That's why we needed the not gate. If we receive a... I think we'd still need the pulse generator, right? Even if I did invert that. I don't suppose there's a pulse generator built into the game? Uh, we've already got these. What's this? Signal selector. Multiplexing? Single input out of one of four possible outputs. Yeah, I don't think that's what we're missing. Clock or lever depends on what you mean with pulse generator. Uh, I mean that I'm probably going to have to set, change this constant signal into a momentary signal. I think I'll just have to put some...
put some stuff down and play with it to get a clearer picture. This is what I was thinking of, the shape of it anyway. Is this thing opening? Oh, it is too. Wait, what? Why is it opening? It's got no power and no signal. Oh wait, it's got a red signal, so it should be closing. What? Um... Can, can we get this powered up relatively soon? Actually, immediately, that would be good. Why are you building the ladder first? Errands. Conductive wire. What? What? Why? Conductive wire. Instruction errand. Top priority. We're doing everything but. We have plenty of iron. It's definitely reachable. When meteor shower is over, wait 45 seconds, let regolith fall, wait for miner to do its job X amount of time, and then open again. Yes. So how does this signal counter work? Send green signal when count is reached. Advanced mode? Wait, what? Percentage? What is advanced mode? In advanced mode, the signal counter will count from zero rather than one. It'll reset when the max is reached. And send a green signal as a brief pulse. Nice, so that's our pulse generator, if we need it. Uh, what about the non-advanced mode? What's the difference? Sometimes there may be too much regolith. Uh, we can just set it to wait the maximum amount of time that it would take to clear. Or, or like a good, slightly above average amount. Uh, alright, so good to know we have our pulse generator. Apparently we can only rotate it north-south. Okay, so buffer gate. Continues sending a green signal for an amount of time. I don't think that's what we want here, actually. It's probably supposed to be a filter gate. Aren't there weight plates that could detect regolith? I think the weight plates probably detect something like this instead. I mean, we can try. Weight plate. Maybe I should build this idea that I have where the dupes can reach it more easily. Filter, filter, buffer? Was that it? Except then, how do we make this one stop after X seconds? Oh no, that's exactly what a filter does. So it's like filter buffer filter, I think. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm not used to playing with these ones. That might be all it takes. It's going to be a bit 
easier to understand as well. Can we do an arbitrary signal for testing reasons? Isn't there like a... I, th I thought there was like a faulty signal thingy. Like a deliberately faulty signal thingy that you could use for testing stuff. Or am I thinking of a different game? Weight plate, sensor, 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 sensor. Motion sensor. We could use a motion sensor and make the dupes move. Or I could just connect it to something else. A switch can be flipped by the player. Okay, good. Good point. That's going to be by far the easiest. So we want... Filter time. No, I think I already thought of the problem with this earlier. So this, this half of it's going to work okay. Why can't I... There we go. Uh, let's say buffer time 10 seconds. And then filter time. We'll continue outputting... Only lets a green signal through if the input received for longer. I keep doing these backwards. And I think we would need a pulse generator before all of this. Yeah, so no, I, I think I was right the first time. The output parts would be buffers. And then we give it a pulse. And, well, if we're giving it a pulse, then a filter's not going to work here. Right? I feel like I probably need more than three of these. Okay, buffer time. Keeps going for 10 seconds. And this is also a buffer. So we've got two periods. Maybe we don't need a buffer for the second one. We want well, it's actually the opposite. Uh... No, we do want green, green, red, green, right? We want green and then a period of red and then green indefinitely until the whole thing resets. Yeah, so, okay, 45 seconds of green after we get the pulse. And then a period of, I don't know, a minute, probably more. For testing purposes, we don't care how long the period is. We basically need the same thing. No, we don't. We just need a delayed and then constant signal. 
So yeah, no, it will be a buffer on this side. We just need to delay this signal going from here to here. Or like, I don't know, two minutes or something. So how do we do that? Uh, instead of converting the pulse back into a constant signal, we just need to have the constant input wherever. Going into one of these. Oh. And it has a separate input for the reset. Green signal reset counter, okay. That makes sense. Yeah, we can reset after this is received green twice. Um, so actually this switch is in the wrong spot. We want the pulse going to this one, and the constant going to this one. Oh, that's so bright. Wait, there we go. Advanced mode. It'll send a green signal as a brief pulse rather than continuously. Signal counter will count from zero rather than one. Okay. And I haven't really left room. Oh, yes, I have. The reset. Let's switch this on. That's what that count is one. Switch it off. Wait, no, that's not right. What's this buffer set to? Five seconds? Should be a lot more. That shouldn't be a buffer, that should be a filter. Construct that. There we go. Filter gate. Okay. So after we get a signal for X seconds, this will be the last thing that happens. We get green signal indefinitely. That's what our filter gate is for. Don't go to sleep. How dare you. How's our CO2 over here? Suboptimal. I might just have to pump the oxygen out. Wait, can we... Oh, that looks weird. There's no way we can... Oh! We can rotate mini gas pumps. Oh, that's beautiful. Yes, please. More of that. We're just going to pump out everything that isn't CO2 with this. Gas bridge this way. And maybe we'll put some sensors on it. Gas element sensor. 
Actually, we'll need a knock gate. Okay. Did we get this built? Why are we still yellow alert? Oh. Why hasn't this been built? I... Oh, is there regolith here? In the way? No? Even if there was, they should dig it. Um... What? Do they, do they just need a ladder here? Is that it? Cavern is on the case. And do we now have an errand? We don't. Why not? We've got iron, right? We definitely have iron. Yeah, I don't get what's happening there. Or how I'm gonna fix it. I might have to remove the bunker door temporarily. Okay. So we switch this on. Count goes up. Um, X seconds later, which is going to be the last thing that happens. Well, let, why don't I set this higher? 60 seconds. Wait, what? Hold on, let's reset that. I think messing with it in the middle was not good. So we get, uh... We get a pulse that goes through here, and then we get a green signal here for 45 seconds. And then, after 60 seconds, we get a green signal here indefinitely. Which means the count should go up twice? Except, we're still getting a green signal here. Which means... Hmm... Wait, we're not getting a green signal through. What? Did I miss something? Start again. I should probably set this to be a bit faster. 5 seconds and 10 seconds. So we can test it a bit more easily. Alright, switch this on. Constant green signal. This is coming from our space scanner. When it detects incoming asteroids. Why is this not connected? Oh, right. Because I was messing with that. My bad. Oh, we got our power. Fantastic. I have no idea what the difference was there. Okay. Let me just double check. This is... Correct. Uh, we are not detecting asteroids, therefore open the doors. Okay, cool. Also, this probably needs power. If it does, it's already connected. Where are we? Okay, turn this off. So, no asteroids are coming. Oh, 
or rather, red means asteroids are coming. Okay, so the asteroids have stopped. We get a green signal here. After 10 seconds, we're going to get a signal here indefinitely. What happened to our pulse? Oh, don't tell me. It only sends a green pulse at the end of the cycle. It'll reset when the max is reached and send a green signal as a brief pulse rather than continuously. So do I want this set to 1? I want this set to 1. Okay, that helps. Alright, switch on. Wait, what? Let's try that again. Switch on. I think we want this set to two. Perhaps. Switch on. Nope, I have confused myself. Um, so we can only get a pulse if we use the advanced mode, right? I think. It's a bit of a nuisance if I only want a pulse. When does it output green? Never? Uh... Sends a green signal when the counter matches the selected value, otherwise never. So, it's just never sending a signal, because it resets at 2? Oh, I see, it's just resetting itself. Um... Maybe this isn't the tool for the job. It is bugged to replace. Oh, the wire? Okay. Let's step back for a sec. We want to receive a pulse. And then... Buffer this. And then have a period of red here, and then this constant signal gets through the filter, and then we have it indefinite. And then the tricky part is going to be resetting the whole thing, I think. Can we have it reset just by, like, receiving a third input? One, two, one, two, one, two. So this is without the reset signal being used at all. So we probably don't need it. Okay, let's make that a bit longer. 10 seconds to 30 seconds, so I can think a bit more clearly. Okay, so 
We receive green signal. Oh, this buffer is still working? Wait, what? Let's reset the whole thing. Okay. We receive signal. Buffer is... Every other time we receive green signal here, this is going to output constantly, though. We want advanced mode because we need the pulse. It'll reset when the max is reached and send a green signal as a brief pulse rather than continuously. Will it send a green pulse every time it receives an input? Doesn't look like it. And we don't want it to, I don't think. Okay, so there's our pulse, and here's our constant input. And we want to hold green, have a period of red, and back to green indefinitely. Perfect. Okay, I think we've got it. And then asteroids are detected again, eventually. So that means this is red. So immediately that goes red. And when asteroids are not detected anymore, we go green. Uh, I think we actually probably want to set this to one, maybe? Did you have any trouble updating your stream title today? Uh, not to my knowledge. Is it not correct? Because I did definitely press the update button. Blind Oni part 16. No, it seems fine. Um, I heard other people were having problems with Twitch today, and I noticed my, like, tab finishing of the commands in chat isn't working. Just mine isn't working. Want to see if it was just me. Yeah, I don't think it's just you. I think they're having problems. Uh, I kind of lost my train of thought here. So, let's change this to like 10 seconds and 20 seconds. A bit easier to test. Alright, so now we've done our mining and we can open up again. And then eventually asteroids detected. Everything closes. Asteroids not detected. There's our pulse. Open, or rather, yeah, open, close, open. And then asteroids detected. Asteroids not detected. I think I have to set this to one. So, advanced mode and one. I think that's probably what we need. Uh, asteroids not detected anymore. Open. Close. Open. Asteroids detected. Close everything. Reset the whole thing. Asteroids not detected. Open. Close. Open. We did it. Okay, so what's the most elegant layout for this? Um, this is a buffer, and this is a filter. Should probably get rid of what we've already got. The starters. And basically, 
Does that counter act as a not gate there? Uh, which one? Uh, I think the answer is no. The counter acts as a pulse generator, so it converts a constant signal into a very brief one. So once we start receiving input, uh, we get a momentary green here, and then the buffer is going to hold that green signal for X amount of time. And on the other side of it, I think it's going to be a bit easier to explain if I redo this in a better and easier to visualize layout. And then I can make a blueprint of it as well. So the constant signal goes to the filter gate. And the pulse signal uh, goes to the buffer gate. And that's basically it. And the, and the timing setup, uh, the settings on the buffer and the filter are such that we get a gap uh, in between. And that's basically it, I think. This spaghetti is a lot more confusing. Get a ladder in here and make sure we can finish that. Alright, so the setting on the counter is advanced mode 1. So all it's doing is acting as a pulse generator. The buffer is a smaller amount than the filter. Are we going to finish the wiring up here? Pretty please. Wait, was my default build priority 6? Let's get that back to normal. Or maybe it should be 6. Because I want building done as a priority. Okay, so. I'll just wait for that to run out, I suppose. Uh... Constant signal arrives, we get a pulse over here, this signal here will last an amount of time, and this one is... has to last X amount of time before the constant input gets through it. So we get on, off, on. much easier to visualize this way, isn't it? Actually, what's this set to? Five seconds? Make this ten. That's it. Alright, so these two in sequence, and this one in parallel to those two. That's all it is, after all of that confusion. Uh, let's put it down here. And as always, I'm confused as to buffer and filter. So filter is the one that goes by itself. And buffer on this side. Wire goes here, here, and we're going to snip this. And that's it. It's 
is a really good illustration of how much more complicated it is to come up with something than to understand it, especially when it is succinct code. Alright, can we get that built today? Fantastic. Oh. Have I been dropping frames? Uh, a little bit. It looks like it shouldn't be noticeable. Uh, advanced mode. Out to one. Uh, buffer time. We need 45 seconds, was it? 45 seconds was the amount of time it takes to open the doors. So... We need the red signal to be for 45 seconds. Add some seconds for regolith to fall. True. We'll make it a minute. It should be fine. So we need the doors open for a minute. Or rather... It's red to open the doors, right? Okay, so we need... I think we only need exactly 45 seconds for the doors to open, because it's like... Well, make it 50. We'll see how that looks. And then... Give it... Let's just make it like one minute and two minutes. And we'll refine it after that. Scan quality 57%. Amazing. Wait, wasn't it lower when we had the bunker door directly above it? So do we need, like, more empty space above here? Or rather, do we need bunker doors to be higher above the space scanner? in order to get the most out of this. This one's actually 9%? Alright, I guess we just have to wait for Regolith now. Hmm... It's a shame we can't force asteroids for testing purposes. Because I really need to see if this is working, because the wrong settings could... What the heck did you just do? The shovel vomited up regolith. Drill-shaped keratin structures. Da -da 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 -da. 
Yeah, it doesn't really tell us why the shovel would do this. If I recall, Scanner needs a 90 degree cone of free space above it. So if we put one here... Oh, that's scan network quality. 9%. Is that the average? It's not the average between these two. It's not how that works. Scan quality, 50%. Wait, the scan network quality went down. What was the percentage over here? Did I misremember it? Just waiting on asteroids. <laughs> I guess now is the time for the notifier. Send a notification when certain conditions are met. Oh, that's right. I remember comparing this to the hammer, and it seems like the notifier is just better. Low threshold green signal. Oh yeah, because if it's low, we want to close the doors. Well, I think we're still connecting it to the same wire. That vol made your automation useless with a single poop? I wouldn't quite go that far. Scan quality 9%, 8%, 8%, 11%. .11%. What? So... Do they not like being close to each other? Maybe minor blocks the view of the scanners? This was like 50% before I built the other three. There needs to be distance? Yeah, that's kind of what I thought. Mazzle Fazzle, good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Uh, well, that was one whole cycle without any asteroids. Never an asteroid shower when you need one. Oh, here we go. And it's actually when this goes back to red that the counter will start. They also need to have unobstructed view. The view area is cone stretching upwards. Let's see. So is it like 45 degrees, or what? We could do that over here, now that we've got our prototype working. Oh, nasty. Give us some regolith, please. Don't tell me we've got incoming with no regolith. Ravna. Oh, wait, no, I think I saw...
That's definitely regolith. There we go. That scanner has zero quality and still detects just fine. Yeah, as far as um, asteroids go, 0% quality is perfect. Um, I built the first one underneath a bunker tile, but then it got covered in regolith, so it doesn't work after that. Uh, so we need to have at least one that is buried. They get interference from industrial machinery in the vicinity, but not all machines count, like the miner. I see. Okay, so as soon as the asteroids stop, we should get a green signal a little bit longer than enough for the doors to open. And then a red signal... Uh, hopefully long enough for the Robo Miner to do his thing. Which I think starts the moment the doors are slightly closed. And then a green signal indefinitely. Until... Uh, until asteroids are detected again and the whole thing resets. So this should only show a 1... Uh, Actually, it should probably never show a 1. It does take a few seconds for the regolith to fall. So now we're closing. Uh, it looks like the miner needs the doors completely shut. So we're probably going to have to extend this timer right here. by not an insignificant margin, actually. Oh, are you kidding me? The regolith killed the wire? Oh no. Because it's too hot, right? Or it was too hot. Okay, we're upgrading to iron. Conductive wire, iron... And automation wire iron, which we've already done over here, I think. I guess we don't really need this wire here. This is an interesting contraption, totally different from my approach, though there's only one tiny floor with minor overheating. Uh, I don't think it's going to overheat. What's it made out of? Steel. It's starting overheat temperature is 75 and this adds 200. Uh, so it would have to be over 275 degrees and I don't think it's going to get there. Probably? You would think the heat from the bunker doors would be transferred to it a bit more. Maybe it just hasn't reached max temp yet. Vacuum does not reduce it, yeah. So we're going to have to have a cooling loop up here. Which isn't that surprising considering that we are bringing in all of this regolith. It'll take a while, yeah. So until we get there, um, I might just stop Uh, stop allowing these to be open.
Okay. One last break for today, and in another hour we'll find someone to raid. Even a cooling loop needs a gas or liquid as a medium between the pipe and the miner, not the liquid inside the pipe. Because of how hot it'll get. Yeah. We could probably use a gas loop. Something to think about. Alright, we'll start words on stream in about 30 seconds. I'll be back in a few minutes. Good luck, have fun, and I'll see you soon. Okay, nicely done. Let's continue. And for now, we could always just deconstruct and reconstruct a Robo Miner. I don't... I don't know how we're going to cool this area. Um, gas pipes, perhaps? We've got the same tools with gas, right? Gas pipe, insulated gas pipe, radiant gas pipe. Is there a rule against those kind of words? Yeah, I think... Uh, I don't know, it might... Some of it might be auto-moderated on Twitch as well. 
The CO2 you are avoiding could be enough if you let it out close to the miner. Hmm. Are we getting enough of a... 45 degrees. That's a lot cooler than up here. You might be right. We don't get a consistent flow of it, but it's going to take ages for this to heat up anyway. That might actually be a genius. Um, pipes like wires don't actually have like an overheat temperature, right? So they wouldn't take damage unless the gas in the pipe changes state. And gas is already the highest state in terms of... You can't put more... Well, and okay, I, I presume we're not turning things to plasma or anything in this game. Um, as far as we're concerned, you can't put more energy into gas in order to... Uh, in order to change its state. Pipes have the melting point of the material they're built out of. Uh, I think with things like sandstone, igneous, rock, and granite, we're probably going to be okay. Sandstone? Uh, 926 degrees. Big me a spock. 1400 degrees. We've got practically infinite granite. Six, that's not so good. 668. Sedimentary. Probably lower, right? 926. Obsidian. We can make it out of obsidian. 2726 degrees. Degrees. Uh, I'm thinking that is probably pretty good, actually. Mojo D, thank you for the raid. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Welcome, raiders. How was your stream today? Timberborn. What's that like? Was good. Fantastic. Uh, mafic rock. That's what we're getting up here. 1400 degrees. So I think obsidian was but the winner by far, right? Igneous rock, 1400. Starting to get late game builds going. Nice, nice. So a bit like where I'm up to in owning, kind of. It was only last stream for Oni that I really started to feel like, yes, we have got control of the mid-game. Oh, we can print something. Uh, sure, I'll take some lime. Obsidian need maximum heat resistance? Wait, what? Oh, yeah, 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 because we are... We're gonna try... We've got this pipe that voids... Uh, CO2 into space already. And we don't need that much throughput of coolant to keep the Robo Miner from overheating. Uh, so I'm, so what was suggested is we simply run CO2 uh, whatever we're voiding uh, the gas into space past it. Because the temperatures here are hot enough that it's going to flash any liquid to steam. Or at least any liquid that I'm aware of. So I was already thinking of using gas. And then I was like, okay, well... Uh, you know, are we going to do like a gas cooling loop? How's that going to work? And someone just said, just use the CO2 that you're already voiding. And yeah, because it's literally... I didn't even notice that the Robo Miner was heating up, uh, or was... It, it's made out of steel, but I think it will eventually get hot enough to, uh, to break. 
um, because we're slowly gaining heat here indefinitely. Uh, well, okay, not indefinitely. It gets up to like 300 something degrees, but our Robo Miner can take 275. Space is so annoying for dealing with heat, right? So we're going to run CO2 that we're venting into space past it. Uh, it is at a chilly 56 degrees at this point, which is fine, as long as it's, you know, lower than 275 degrees or significantly lower than it, it should help to cool this off. Um, the only question is... Let's start our obsidian pipe here. Uh, I think the only question is, do we vent the CO2, like, right next to the miner? Does that help anything? Or, and or, do we run the pipe behind it? I think we do do that. So just put a... I think we... Hmm... The CO2 doesn't exactly go up or down or anything, it kind of just disappears, right? Because this is all space exposed. So I think we want the tile that's as close to the miner as possible. Put some drywall tiles behind it? I was just thinking that, yeah. Uh, Rupert Miner and the CO2 will have a fraction of time longer to grab the heat before it's voided, yes. Uh, we could use temp shift plates, actually. Um, this is definitely, definitely the use case for that. What are we going to make it out of? We could make it out of obsidian. Oh, wow. 800 each? Uh, let's make the temp shift plates out of lead. I think not. It'll just melt. We won't even lose the lead, I don't think. Diamond? High thermal conductivity. We're not using diamond for a whole lot. I'd use drywall? I mean... We're really not using diamond for a whole lot. Make it out of ice. Perfect. Use ice and replace it every so often. <laughs> Indeed. Uh, we're not making it out of metal. I think we want something that can take more heat. We don't have... We, we've got enough obsidian that making pipes out of it is no problem. Uh, but... Making temp shift plate out of it is a bit questionable. Let's use diamond, why not? <laughs> oh, don't need one there, actually. Diamond has the best heat conductivity, like, in the game. Uh, thermal conductivity 80? Wow. Yes, perfect. Uh... Is there a universe where we add, like, a gas valve? Just a manual one so that we output the gas more slowly? So that the gas has more time to... Uh... To trade temperature, basically? Oh, I know. We could... Because we're, we're only getting a trickle of gas through here, right? From time to time. When we're voiding the waste. Uh, from... Oh, it's not just CO2. It's from our natural gas generators as well. So it won't be that much of a trickle. But even so, I think I'd like to let the gas accumulate here before we let it out. So, we could just connect a gas 
detector. Gas pipe element sensor. I don't care about the element. I just care, is there something in the pipe? Gas pipe germ sensor. Gas pipe thermo sensor. Gas meter valve. When the specified amount has gassed, uh, has passed through. They let an exact amount of gas pass through before shutting off. No, that's not what I want. I only want to detect, is there gas in this pipe? Or rather, the, no, the volume of gas in this pipe. Liquid element, gas... Gas thermo, gas germ, gas pipe element sensor. I want gas pipe pressure sensor. I think you're cooling the door there, or rather heating the miner with the door's heat. Yeah, we are heating the miner with the door's heat. That's the problem that we're working towards solving here. There isn't, but why would you want it? Because when we get these little packets of gas going through, I don't want them to come through here ever so briefly and then leave. I want some gas to accumulate right here before we let it out of the system so that we'll get, the gas will have more time to trade temperature. So basically I want, if this bit of the pipe is full of gas, then we can let some out. Uh, and the rate we're going, it looks like I would have to have a gas container to make that happen, which is way more bigger than I want to build here. Temp shift plate will steal heat from the door? Uh, I suppose that's probably okay, because the door is already gonna be... I mean, the fact that the door is transferring heat to the miner is the problem in the first place. How about stacking it as a packet and then limiting it through a valve limited to the amount coming in? Yeah, I was gonna... At first I was gonna put a valve that's just manually set to bottleneck the gas that's coming through. Um, but I'd rather have some automation on the off chance that more gas is gonna be coming at some point. Um, and it doesn't require any manual tweaking or anything. Uh, I could just detect... I, I, I could... Yeah. If I have to, I could look for two different gas elements. Which would be CO2, polluted oxygen. I think those are the only things uh, that we're putting into this pipe. Or is it just CO2 at the moment? Oh, here we go. Polluted oxygen. Just put a gas meter before the valve. Gas meter. A gas meter. Oh. Is that up here somewhere? Atmo sensor, gas shut off. Gas pipe thermo, gas pipe element. That's liquid pipe. I think the door is not heating minor, the regolith that falls does. Well, the door is 300 degrees, and it's connected to the Robo Miner directly. Um, and actually, if I cancel this, you can see uh, the Miner is gradually getting hotter, just sitting here. 
You can see the bunker door is getting colder. Just barely. Uh, if I just leave this as is, it should probably reach 170. It might take a while. Three oh eight. Three oh eight point two, three oh eight point one, three oh seven point nine. Yeah, that heat is going somewhere. Put a valve and add a pipe and a bridge. If some gas reaches there as overflow, you will open the vent. That might work. But can I detect a non-specific type of gas? No, that was the problem in the first place. Put a valve and a pipe and a bridge. If some gas reaches there as overflow, you open the vent. But then we have to, we're back at square one, we have to check whether there's gas in a certain tile. Under ventilation there should be a gas pressure sensor. That's for outside though, is the problem. It's actually not under ventilation, uh, it's under automation. Atmo sensor. This is just for ambient gas. You can put a gas you'll never have there, like gas copper, and invert the signal. Oh, hello. Okay. So, gas element. If it's empty, well, oh, let's find out. Gas pipe element sensor. Is that what we're talking? That also will trigger when empty? Oh. Yeah, that's the problem. It's gonna act like the liquid pipe thermo sensor, right? Where it's gonna send us a signal. Okay. No automation wire connected, no filter selected. So, iron, red. What was the idea? Put a gas that you'll never have there. I just want to be sure that we don't second guess ourselves and end up skipping something that would have worked. Okay. Uh, so we need set it to a gas other than oxygen, and it's red, and invert it. It's going to be, yeah, it's going to be the same if it's empty. Um, hmm. It's almost all CO2 that comes through. If I put a sensor like back here for CO2... Yeah, if I... Okay, let's say like... One in... F let, let's say one in ten tiles is polluted oxygen, not CO2. Wait, which? This one outputs which? CO2. If I just wait till we detect CO2 here before letting this out, and we never get this many tiles of not CO2 but some other gas, then... 
that should work, right? It's a little bit dodgy. But as long as we know... As, as long as we know that it's almost always CO2 that comes up here. And we never get a stretch of, like, ten tiles of a different gas. Then that actually will work. If the flow is constant, it'll always detect it. The flow tends to come in bursts of... Oh, more tiles than I thought, actually. Yeah, it, it'll work for never getting clogged, but it won't work for the original purpose. Hmm. Uh, I guess we have to make this out of s at least gold. Probably steel for the gas vent. We don't need a high pressure gas vent. Why not try a cycle timer? I could do that. I was thinking um, about that a little bit. But it would be kind of similar to just having a manual valve that we set to not let gas through very quickly. If you wire the vent directly, it will close vent when timer is not green. As in, just use this timer that we already have. Just bridge a reconnected to the pipe with the vent as overflow. Just bridge a what now? Reconnected to the pipe. Nani? If we try to do a, a, a loop here, it'll always want to go to the output. Just do the thing with the thing so things work? Yes. Perfect. You know how overflow bridge works? Uh, sort of. It's not intuitive, but... You mean like this? Well, this isn't exactly overflow. This is just priority output for... Uh, the Thermo Aqua Tuna. Speaking of which, we're up to 180 degrees. Nice. So we are banking steam now. I've set it to consume steam if it reaches 300 degrees, or if our battery is low enough. The fact that it's up to 180 tells us that we've been doing well with power for a while. Um, I'm going to try something a little dodge and probably good enough. And that is... We're just going to let the gas out when we open the doors. Right? That sh that's probably going to be good enough. Um, let's get this build finished before we open the doors up again. If you put a pipe out of the input, we'll take that away if the bridge can't put the things on the green. Oh, uh, if the bridge can't output. Yeah, yeah, I getcha. Oh, uh, I think I see what you mean. So, like... If we have... If we have pipe going left to right, but we have a bridge going back this way. So first the, the gas comes from here and then it'll always go to a building intake, preferably. And then it'll want to come back here. This will be blocked. 
I don't think I do understand, actually. Uh... No? You found a way it'll fail? Never mind, then. Okay, let's just try... I, I'm just going to see if we get about the same result by... Um, just using our door thing as a timer. That should get more than enough throughput to let all of the gas out. And it will also let gas accumulate here when asteroids are coming. Uh, on the second thought... Okay, I know the asteroids don't last that long, but... But at that rate, maybe we should just have a gas reservoir, which would have solved the problem in the first place, because I can check how full the reservoir is. Like... We could just have a gas reservoir before the um, output, and just like in Factorio, once you have a storage, you can actually check how much is in the pipes indirectly. But it, it just feels overkill, especially with how big the reservoir is. That's also one more thing that we have to worry about overheating. Can we not get this built? The Robo Miner is only at 169 degrees. Let's actually get the temp shift plate built last. Temp shift plate, utilities, uh, priority four. Actually, priority five is fine. As long as this other stuff is higher priority. Still 169. Yeah, it's taking a very long time to heat up. Um, bunker doors are cooling down. 295? Are they really not transferring heat to the miner? 298. Oh, this is cooling down as well. Where is it going? Uh, where is this heat going? don't understand. I'm talking if he uses a tank, need a valve to open and close. Okay. Let's get these pipes built and we'll see what happens. No automation wire connected. I'm aware of this. The heat is leaking down in your base from the Gravitos, where there's all the ladders. Oh, this way? Hmm. All the more reason to get a cooling system here to vent it. I mean, we were already getting heat from up here, down into here. But why is this so cold? 219 degrees? That's weird. Beldak is on the case. 
Oh, that's why it's taking a minute, because we're coming all the way down here from Obsidian. And then apparently climbing the ladder instead of using the tube? Or did I just miss it? Good job, Valdak. Oh, doors are opening. The Robo Miner did not gain a single degree from that regolith going past it. It's getting hot. Oh, it's really just producing heat by operating. Huh. Well, regardless, uh, it is slowly heating and we do need to cool it. It's just its own heat, yes. Ironically, the uh, regolith is cooling the space scanner over here. Or something is. Uh, maybe... Maybe these should be radiant pipes. Right about here. What temperature are we looking at? 58 degrees or so? Uh, we got plenty of gold amalgam. Why don't we cool this area as we go? Did something break? Doors are not closing. Uh, they're not supposed to yet. But... Wait, wait, wait. Doors are not... Did they not close at all? No, they did close, because we did some mining. They just didn't close long enough. I forgot, we were... Finding that we needed a bit longer for this thing. Uh, let's have the doors close. You can't cool vacuum? Yeah, you don't say. That's why we're pumping the gas up here. We're using our exhaust gas as also a coolant. Hmm. Well, if I need more than 200 seconds, I'll just have to have multiple filter gates. That's easy enough. Just have filter gates in series. We need to stop before 275 degrees for the Robo Miner. Good time to test it. taking their sweet time with that obsidian, though. Oh, what are we built, uh, printing? Water? <laughs> sure, why not? Just the fact that it's not as hot as the other water is uh, a little bit helpful. Not to mention, we've still got a long way to go to fill up our reservoir. So we've got two geysers to do that now. Requires emptying. 
get on it. Okay. We are painfully close to having this pipe done. Regular cloned water, indeed. Could set it as top priority. Uh, it should be done soon. Nice, that'll cool the base as well. Speaking of cool, our food supply is looking very reliable right now. How's our metal? We are at almost three tons of steel. That's fantastic. Iron is four tons. What have we got queued up here? Almost nothing, actually. Whoops. Let's not do iron to steel forever. We could maybe do iron ore to iron forever. Since we know there's always iron ore coming in up here. But no, I think not. Did we get our gas? We did not get our gas. Can we hurry up with that? I think everyone's asleep right now. Yep, perfect timing. I thought someone was building from a very long way away for a second there. 555 cycles, still no signs of rocket, but we are close. Well, I mean, it's my first playthrough. I'm still learning everything. And I'm experimenting as we go. Look at how quickly we got that supplied. And built. Okay. Alright. So now gas should be coming. Uh, quite a bit of it, because I shouldn't have cut off that pipe as soon as I did. But it's fine. Alright, so when the doors are open, the gas vent is open. And we've got some radiant pipe here so that this area will be relatively cooled down as the gas passes through. It won't get particularly cool down here, but it'll be cooler than it would have been if we didn't do that. Is there PO2... Uh, going up that line too, so an element sensor would break things. Uh, yeah, we've got... I, I'm, I'm venting some polluted oxygen just because it's easier this way. Uh, Robo Miner... Oh, wow! Robo Miner is cooling down fast, and we don't even have the temp shift plates yet. Uh, I don't think we need the temp shift plates. It's already down to 160 degrees. 150. Yeah, it is never getting remotely close to 275. Um, I don't think we need... We needn't have worried about letting the gas stop here so that the, uh, the temperature can exchange for longer. I actually can't believe how quickly that's cooling. And we didn't even use radiant pipe either. Let's see what happens if the doors close, indeed. Uh, I mean, we could just wait for an asteroid. Actually... Can a gas reservoir have more than one type of gas in it? I'm guessing no.
Yeah, I don't think we need to close the vent, to be honest. Uh, which means we need to deconstruct that wire, actually. Just snipping it won't help. Gas reservoir can have multiple? Oh, really? That's interesting. So not like a uh, pipe in Factorio. I thought a gas reservoir would act as like one giant unit, kind of like a tile or a pipe, where it would only allow one uh, type of fluid or, or gas in particular. Okay, so as it turns out, it's uh, surprisingly easy to keep these things relatively cool. Just have to run an, just have to run an exhaust pipe past them. Multiple gases are categorized and stored with care by the gnomes that live inside. Indeed. Oops. Alright then. Now I just want to see one more cycle of meteors. So the fact that something like this is necessary slightly changes my plans for what a finalized version of all of this would look like. Uh, but I'm glad venting gas into space has this secondary use. Very handy. So I guess next we start designing a a more refined version of this, where the space scanner hopefully has maximum scan quality. I'm hoping the bunker doors don't um, affect it at all when they're open. I don't think they do, judging by the numbers. Oh? I didn't see a single asteroid. Why are we opening? That was maybe a little bit brief. Oh, no, I just saw Regolith fall through there. So I guess when they're opening, they're completely closed until they f finish opening. And when they're closing, they're completely open until they finish closing. Is how the bunker doors work. That Vol did it again, right? He's a sneaky little fellow. Nice. I'm quite happy with that. Robo Miner is cooling down a bit more slowly now, but who cares? The point is it's never going to reach 275 degrees, not even close. Yeah, okay, so we see how this works. That means the 45 second timer on the buffer gate is actually perfect. Nice. So, barring sabotage by the shove vol, uh, this space scan is going to be working pretty much all the time. And it'll just be for one cycle of... I don't mean a day, I mean... It'll be one repetition of asteroids coming in that fixes this. Minecrafty, thank you for the follow. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Wait, doesn't this mean... Doesn't this mean our cooling problem, if we want to use solar panels, is solved? More or less. We're still going to have to get... Hmm. I think we're going to want 
uh, as much as it's going to let heat through a bit faster. Uh, we're going to want a heavy watt conductive joint plate. Because we want this power to go to... Oh, that's a good fit. That's, that's a very nice fit, actually. Uh, we want this power to go to the main grid. This is a very cool way to um, cool things in space. Making useless gases useful, right? I'm much less concerned about the heat up here now. I actually can't believe how relatively easy it turns out to be to cool this. Just run gas past it that we're already deleting. Nothing says temperature reduction like 42 degrees of gas literally vanishing. That ac it actually might be... I mean, in terms of possible speed and volume, sending gas to space is definitely... Uh, the fastest way we could delete heat, as far as I can think of. Uh, the only trouble is we don't necessarily produce that much gas. But since we're producing gas for our power, uh, not to mention some other things. Speaking of which, there's our CO2. Oh, that looks good. Oh yeah, I for wait, we never actually powered these mini gas pumps. Oh, we've got two kilograms? Oh, that's the limit from the gas vent. We've we've got high pressure, relatively high pressure CO2 in this room, so all of the what little oxygen and polluted oxygen is in here. It's just oxygen actually is just getting forced. We can pretty much make this one room. And then there's CO2 everywhere except the very top, and that can get out up here. Yeah, that's a much better low-tech solution. Can I deconstruct? Does this count? Oh, automation. No, I think this counts as a building. Yeah, building. Well, I'm glad I forgot to hook this stuff up. Turns out we didn't need any of this at all. A steam turbine connected to that door can help in speeding up things faster, but of course the scale of work needed is a bit bigger, definitely. Yeah, uh, this is definitely hot enough to flash water to steam. But uh, now I want to see... Oh, this is just made of glass somehow. Overheat temperature 75. Oh, that's a lot more difficult than I thought. Yeah, keeping solar panels below 75 degrees is going to be a little bit more tricky than just using waste gas here. Probably? You would need coolant that doesn't turn to steam. This is true. You can place glass over them. Wait, what? Um, but yeah, I think what we'll do is... I was going to say have a separate room, but we could do use this as well. If we run all of our output gas through radiant pipe that goes back and forth through here... Uh, if the gas is coming in at like 40 degrees, or even higher sometimes, why is this 56 degrees and this is 40 degrees? It, 
Is this an exception to what normally happens? What are the temperatures over here? Much hotter than the gas. Uh, just here is cooler, I guess. That's just the abyssalite. That hardly counts. Where is... So I think it's equalizing the temperature from here to here, and that still hasn't happened. Okay. I think that's what's happening. Radiant gas pipes have shitty thermal conductivity? I mean, they have better thermal conductivity than other gas pipes. Second layer of airflow tiles or glass. Okay. Yeah, so for a minute there I was thinking if we just do a zigzag of pipes where we're already venting our waste gas, uh, it will be enough to keep the uh, keep the solar panels below 75 degrees, but I'm not so sure about that. At least not with the current setup we have. Maybe if we... The gas is quite cool here compared to up here. Maybe if we run this for long enough, we'll pump enough of this heat outside and get to the point where... If, if we get the Robo Miner down to like 70 degrees or less, uh, which it looks like it might happen, I would seriously consider just putting a solar panel here. But I think the solar panel itself is going to heat up just from the sun bearing down on it, right? Or is that what's already happening here? And it's not actually worse just because it's a solar panel. Light doesn't add heat. Okay, that makes sense. So... Yeah. The Robo Mine is down to 73 degrees. Does the solar panel itself... It does not generate heat like normal... Uh, normal. Like other buildings do. Okay, so... We need to cool this stuff down first. Um, I think... Uh, I don't really want to replace Abyssalite. Oh, the Abyssalite's cool. Yeah, definitely don't replace that. Uh, we will put some tiles here, if only to make sure this these hot tiles are replaced with something cooler. So that we don't immediately transfer a bunch of heat to our solar panel. And... You know what? We're only, we're only gambling a little bit of glass if, uh, if this doesn't work. I guess we don't need it to go that high, do we? Maybe here if we want to put a second solar panel. What are we making this out of? Gold amalgam. That should be fine. That is vacuum. How oh, you will fix that? Fix what? What are we fixing? Oh, can I do this from the pipe menu or pipe overlay? Here we go. Radiant pipe is useless in vacuum. Uh, we can just put some walls behind it.
I mean, it's... We didn't even put the walls behind it here, and it is exchanging heat uh, with the Robo Miner. Walls won't help? Well... The Robo Miner's down to 62, 61 degrees already. Because the vent is right next to it. Uh, hmm. We'll see. Can't really see CO2 with this view. Uh, I don't think the gas is... What's that? Polluted oxygen. Why is the polluted oxygen lasting so much longer? Because it comes through in a bigger packet? Yeah, I'm not convinced, considering how fast the Robo Miner was cooling down at first. I don't know that it's just when the gas comes out that this was cooling. I don't know if there's, like, actually contact between the Robo Miner and the gas pipe. We could extend the pipe over here to find out. building this quite quickly actually. Oh, because there's gold amalgams lying around here? That's good. I still haven't really done... no, I literally haven't done anything with petroleum uh, on this save because we've got plastic from the Drecos. Sure, we'll take some glass. But I do need petroleum for jetpacks. I haven't played with those yet. Uh, where do we make jetpacks again? Station? Jet suit checkpoint checks jetpack suit dock. Oh, it's big. It is 2x4, it looks like. Yeah, it is a lot bigger. <laughs> Well, okay, it's one by one bigger than the Atmos suit checkpoint, but still. Uh, it's time to finish up, but I want to do this experiment first. Close this vent remotely? I don't think so. Oh, is this cooling down? That might give us a hint. It looks like it's not. Oh, the gas isn't moving. What's happening? Is this it? We're not, because we're not connected anymore, that's probably why. Okay, so the space scanner is actually holding at exactly two, 256 degrees. That would appear to demonstrate that yes, this, the pipe itself is not exchanging heat with the Robo Miner. Uh, so... Temp shift plate? Maybe? Worth a try. Of course, try it as you're doing all the tests. Yeah. We're doing science here. 
we are going to verify what we think we know. Why is this... oh. It already got disabled, but they didn't build this yet. Can we hurry up with that? Of course they built those two tiles first. Oh, this was obsidian. So I should have just made it out of gold amalgam. That would have been easier. Eschiva, thank you for the follow. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Alright. No, don't. Don't not finish building it. Oh, it actually needs more obsidian. Okay. Just a little bit more. We've got some time. Jetpacks uh, and pathing don't play nice together? Uh oh. So should I limit jetpacks to like smaller areas? Places that places where the dupes don't usually pass? For UPS reasons? Can can we please get this vent finished? Heaven is on the job actually. Fantastic. Okay, so Robo Miner, 54 degrees. How did hydrogen get in there? Well, it was only a little bit. And it is holding steady at exactly 54.1. Okay. When is this temp shift plate getting built? Right now? Carenza is on the job. Oh, we have to go all the way down here for diamond. Perfect. It might work totally fine for you, just don't build too many. Too many of what? Oh, the, uh, the jetpacks. Oh, don't tell me. We need another trip? Oh, no. Karenz is on the job again. Wait, what? You could have done that... Mm. Bad Karenza. And we can't quite see the progress bar, but it takes a little while to build this thing. Asteroids are coming. 54.1 degrees, I believe that was our temperature before. Okay. Uh, 256.1 degrees is our space scanner. And I can't believe you've done this. There's... There's absolutely zero... change in temperature here. Well... That'll be our science for today. So, if we're going to cool things this way, we kind of need to... We, we need, like, multiple vents close to the things we need to cool. Something must be in the atmosphere layer, either a gas or a liquid, for heat to transfer. Yeah. I could have multiple gas vents and use automation to say... Don't bother opening unless the temperature is above X, except what are we reading the temperature from is the problem. Because we're not reading it from the gas, from the atmosphere. 
We can't read the temperature of a building directly. Uh, I guess... I guess if we have like a... Like a background wall and... A temper... Uh, just a regular temperature sensor, thermo sensor. Right next to the building... It's a bit more of a problem because the building's big. We have to pick a spot next to it somewhere. Um, but... Put a thermo sensor right next to the vent. I don't know how that's going to behave if it's just in vacuum. I guess the temperature plate isn't going to make a difference. So we're probably going to have a vent and a thermo sensor right next to the vent. And we're going to vent if temperature is above X degrees. And we're going to repeat that next to each building that needs to be cooled. And then on the off chance that all of those are closed, we'll have another vent after them. That's plan A, anyway, until we can think of something better. You can cycle opening every other vent. Uh, yeah, I mean... As long as everything doesn't reach breaking point, that's the only thing that really matters here. Let's find someone to raid. Oxygen not included. Uh, there's not that many people streaming it right now. The true only wisdom is knowing that you know nothing. I can vibe with that. You don't like the extra layer for avoiding the regolith to land on things you want to protect? Extra layer, do you mean like an extra layer of doors? We could do that. This is all like draft one, more or less. This is this is our uh scrounging around in the dark, trying to figure something out the first time. Okay. Thank you all for watching. Do take care, and I'll see you next time. Uh, tomorrow we'll be continuing with Oxygen Not Included, then after that a couple of days of space exploration. Morpheus, take care. Thanks for hanging out. See you next time, Evil Plot. And that sounds violent. Because it is. Take care, Robo Jumper. Tyrannosaurus X, hello. How was your stream? Uh, thank you so much for the rate.